to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and bless the Lord tonight. Just wave your hands to Jesus and bless you. Call him every name and every blessing him to be. the Lord for the spirit of wisdom and understanding please lift your voice grant understanding oh God grant understanding in the name of Jesus Grant us understanding. Grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we ask you again for understanding in the name of Jesus. Let our hearts be receptive to your word and let it transform our lives and let the proof be at work in our lives and through our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated.
it's good to be back home i want to thank the lord for this opportunity again it was a great time in god's presence I want us to pray tonight and um, tonight's teaching is a call you know tonight made me understand again the power of being in the spirit and truly what can happen to a man when you are genuinely connected to the flow of what God is doing Praise the Lord. Yes. As I came up here and heard Pastor Alpha teaching, and then. So tonight's teaching is a call. If you are not great and you have not seen anything in God, you may not need tonight's teaching. Tonight's teaching is for people who have seen the hand of God tonight's teaching is for people who have committed themselves to press into the things of the spirit and, um, doesn't mean that if you're just starting out the teaching for you but this is God speaking to the matured ones tonight in the name of Jesus Christ come up hither part one Come up hither, part one. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessing and honor. Blessing and honor. To Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Glory and power, glory and power, unto him who sits on the throne, blessings and honor. Glory and power, glory and power forever and ever, forever and ever, and you reign forever and ever. Oh, 
Please be seated if you can and then be sensitive. 
Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. Especially for those of us who came from far, you didn't come to waste your time. You see, let me tell you something about a call and a ministry. Listen, listen. See, when God calls a man, the anointing is not the only thing that is given. You have to understand this. Every ministry has many standard spiritual features. When God calls a man, please listen. There is an anointing that is upon that man by reason of his knowledge and his personal press into the things of God. There is the anointing that is on the office that that man occupies spiritually. There is the anointing that is on that man by reason of discerning and being part of the current move of God. They are not the same. Are we together? And then there is the anointing that comes by reason of the dimensions that God wants to take people into based on the truths that are revealed. And then at certain levels, depending on the call and what office, there are covenants. Please listen. That means a vow that God made with that man that as far as it relates to this assignment i have bound myself to do certain things that has nothing to do with even the vessel you see that then there are angelic manifestations listen now there are angels that work with believers There are angelic presence please listen as a believer he said his angels she shall put his angels charge over you there are angelic presence that work with believers but there are angels that don't follow a man they follow anointings they don't need to know who that individual is it's an office the same way they give you an office and there are cars, there are PAs, they don't have to know you. It is part of the equipping of the kingdom. You see that? It's very important. And then there are also angelic presence that signify revelations. It is not only the anointing that gives revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto John, his servant he said he sent it and signified it by his angel hallelujah so when you're in a meeting like this and you see things like this happen it's an interplay of many things it's not just a generic move of an anointing from an anointed man there are things happening that have nothing to do with the vessel himself there are things that are as a result of the, the health of the secret place of the vessel. There are certain things that are based on the office that is being played. I, I just wanted you to learn and to know this. Because many times, believers just wonder, look, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You see, these things, God is blessing. It's not just that God is proving that a man is anointed. Some of these people fall in. Many things are happening at the same time. There are deliverances. There are impartations. There are the, the opening. Spiritual vistas. It's like a veil. Just being opened to move men into dimensions. This is how people grow. This is how people grow. It is not my desire to 
carry some of these graces and these possibilities and just have people watch it uh -uh. when god sends a word to jacob it is because of israel that you will also be able to carry these dimensions you see transformation is difficult when there is no reference so god finds a man that represents a possibility and then your spirit and your mind is able to comprehend that dimension as true and possible then you can release your faith and step into it koinonia we call it is it all right if you pray for one minute and just ask the lord say lord all the graces all the revelations pastor alpha let us know you don't have to stand just pray please pray with desperation and hunger hallelujah praise the lord please be seated revelations 4 tonight will be a mighty time it will be brief so that we'll pray we pray for grace we pray for strength revelations chapter 4 this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be thereafter come up hither and i will show thee things which must not may be certainty things which must be thereafter jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 jeremiah 33 and verse 3 how can i see by myself unless you take over i'll never know it on my own unless you take over take over jesus take over take over jesus take over how can i see by myself unless you take over i will not hear it on my own unless you take over Take over, take over, take over, take over. You cannot learn it on your own unless it takes over. You'll never see it by yourself unless it takes over listen there are dimensions you can never see by willpower and study it is given like an initiation until your eyes are open you will never see it he said call on to me and i will answer i will be the one to show you if i don't show you you cannot see it you can study you can pray you can fast but for seeing you may have eyes but you can never see it there are realms that are shown 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 it's called fellowship with the mystery you are brought into oneness with truths and revelations we'll never know we by ourselves unless it takes over 
We cannot know it by ourselves. I'll never hear you on my own unless you take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. Take over. Please sit down. Tonight is a call to press higher. Tonight is a call to shake us away and out of spiritual complacency. Tonight is a call to show us that there is more. That regardless of that which we have seen, there is more. That's why I said, if you have not done anything serious in the spirit, this message may not be for you. This message is for someone who has healed before. It's for someone who has prophesied before. It's for someone who is at the cutting edge of the move of God. It's for someone who has tasted and seen the power and the glory of God. Tonight's message is for someone who knows what it means to be used by God. Tonight's message is someone is for someone who knows what it means to have the anointing, not guessing. Come up here, he said. Come up here to a higher realm of prophecy to a higher realm of teaching to a higher realm of visions to a higher realm of spiritual power I'm a student of revivals God has granted me the privilege to study the moves of God please listen and I have studied revivals I've listened to a few senior colleagues and fathers in the ministry talk about revivals either based on their experiences or what they were told please listen carefully and I learned this from a man of God that the current move of God always fights the next move of God that the enemy of the next move of God is the current move because many times listen carefully every move of God comes with a level of outstanding results every move of God comes with a performance in a higher dimension and usually because of the the consistency that will come with that move over a period of time it is easy for those who have mastered the strategy that makes them relevant within that move to plateau in the spirit and not believe that there can be more again now listen very carefully when the healing ministry started listen carefully great men like alexander the way and these generals of god they moved in very strange dimensions but then a time came when the healing ministry seemed to just plateau because it looked like men had gotten to the zenith of what they believed that God could do. When the prophetic came, people rose to certain levels and it looked like those who were the highest manifestors of those gifts just stood at a realm. is not backsliding this is that you have exhausted every possibility that is within the jurisdiction of that move there is nothing you can do as far as that dimension is concerned you have exhausted it at that level you will need revelations chapter 4 a time will come when you will find out that every dimension you need to see as written to, for you by God within a level you have exhausted it you've read it you've preached it you've done everything and let me tell you this listen very carefully I say it with all humility but I have seen you, you see when you start walking with God 
because of the extent of the downpour listen carefully of visions of revelations you are being open to new things and then especially if you have the privilege of what i call pioneer status that means that you are the among the few to introduce that dimension to a territory because of the scarceness of that revelation there will be a lot to do i mean you are so full of revelation you can preach back to back and there are messages but a time will come when the people within that territory all come into that experience they are baptized into it now listen very carefully remember when you were introducing it because very few people knew about that dimension there was hunger and the hunger will always draw you anything you say there will be an applause for it because very few people could enter that dimension but with time everybody will continue to press as you guide them listen carefully you will get to a point where the least has entered like the ark of noah at that point now you will find out that together the goal for that season has been met because god now used you and showed you a dimension and so for three or four years sometimes you will not even need to study anything new you are so full so full you it's like it's a it's like an animal that has just given birth and wanting the children to suck when that happens let me tell you what happens usually because of the joy the beauty the honor the applause that comes by reason of your being used by god to produce certain dimensions you may fall into the deception that the zenith of what you communicate is all that there can be and so what you will continue doing is recycling the same thing recycling the same thing recycling the same thing to mean that this realm that have stayed is all there can be in god revelation starts with john the beloved do you know who john was john was not just an apostle he was called the beloved that means if you arrange all the disciples according to their permit me to use the word according to their spiritual stratification the first will not be peter the first will be john the beloved there abided these three faith peter hope james love john the greatest you see that now and john was banished in an isle called patmos for the sake of the testimony of jesus christ and while he was there he said i was in the spirit on the lord's day that, that's another discussion there because there are things you cannot see he said flesh and blood has not revealed this there are levels in the spirit where until you rise in the spirit you cannot see you cannot know so he says i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i heard first started with his hearing i heard this and that and that and then eventually he saw the church the lamb stands and then he received the dimension of revelation to the seven churches that were in asia minor prophetically the catholic church the complete church because every one of those churches represented a dimension in the body that god was adjusting commending and correcting are we together having exhausted that then he was open to another dimension of worship in heaven are we together and to think that that was all john was being told by this revelation that john at this plane that you stand now there is nothing to see again everything has been seen and every instruction has been received notice john was never shown things that will happen from that plane he only saw things that were and things that are that was it then chapter 4 comes and he says come up hither and let's go to the future let me show you the things that must happen shortly and john rolls to the future there are realms that when you stand there you will see what has happened and what is happening but you may never see what god is up to 
you can be a Christian you can still be called I learned very early in life and in ministry that as wonderful as fame is it can be dangerous that as wonderful as revelation and leadership is let me tell you this if you ever assume a pioneer status in the spirit you have to be extra careful pioneers are usually the ones who hardly finish read the bible there are few pioneers that finished moses leads the people and never gets into the promised land himself are you seeing that now it's very important it's easy to follow a move that was not introduced by you it's easy to follow on yours is just to observe and plate and to conform to it by the spirit the nation of israel did not have to climb the mountain to experience god they just needed to look at the face of the one who already went what was in the mountain was now on the face of a man so instead of climbing up the mountain they just kept looking at moses and they would have the same experience but it was up to moses to know the next thing that god would be doing are we together now as powerful as moses was you can see the extent of his trial and error they will wait behind and wait for him to go and fish out the new move then all of them will come and follow it was because of this moses was instructed to speak to the rock and in anger he struck the rock and because of that he said no 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 no. this was not my program you've corrupted it you cannot enter canaan pioneering the move of god is very dangerous many people like the honor that follows this and that to say oh we are the ones that started this dimension but you see the thing about it is that because you are at that level you will feel indebted to that level you will be emotionally connected to that move you cannot leave it to the next level are we together now yes that you were the first to be to open up a dimension of god to a territory it's like you are the first to start producing this and now when you are aware that this is no longer in use if everybody leaves it you will not want to leave it too because of that relationship that's how it is even with spiritual things there are dimensions that you can be so emotionally connected to because of the experiences that surround that dimension and when another move of god starts coming you will prefer that the move comes to meet you there but not to leave that level and to rise higher that's why i said it is dangerous to pioneer spiritual things it's a noble cause and it's a noble task but the burden on it it will only take the spirit of the living god to help you the second reason why it is dangerous or by dangerous i don't mean it is not advantageous that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that you are in a very vulnerable position the second is that because of the charisma and the ego are we together and the sense of achievement that surrounds that level the moment you and any other move that is happening within that dispensation that you don't seem to be involved in you can preach that it is error or it is satanic or it is demonic because you are used to being the starter you are not used to following you are used to starting moves understand what i'm saying you know you see that if you have not done anything in god tonight's teaching may not really bless you john was the first of his kind to introduce this dimension of the prophetic a very strange prophet the bible says of all the prophets none was as great as john so john is in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey a strange dimension of revelation when jesus comes john baptizes jesus and then he's happy that he's baptized jesus even john said i may decrease i'm not sure he understood what he was saying now eventually the disciples of john 
had to start living to join something that was a move john was never in one of jesus's crusades they didn't hang him the next day they didn't lock him the next day john was alive he was there he never saw the need because he believed that the the emotional connect and the ego of pioneering things did not allow him to go there notice all the people that seemed to be pioneers were those who were offended with jesus the scribes and the pharisees we are the sanhendry council what are you doing jesus all the followers were excited what is the new thing let us join if it's bread we eat if it's the mountain we climb but the scribe said not so this is not how we have been doing it including john follow me very carefully so john is hearing of the things jesus is doing and a few disciples who are loyal to him too come back look at the pain in john's heart the people he had raised i don't know what john thought he would become but his honor was already there for his assignment completed but john probably believed that he would continue to run that ministry the same way jesus was running it to like a parallel whatever it is and it seemed as though jesus did not have regard for john because we never see jesus making any mention of john go and greet john or oh, john just to tell you your boy is still here the move continues and the fame of jesus is growing john is threatened the scribes are threatened the roman government threatened everything every day was an episode of mighty things listen very carefully follow me i want to show you something powerful mm. one day john gets himself in trouble and he's behind bars about to be beheaded and he sends in offense listen this is the current move fighting the next move go and confirm are you the one that we should be waiting for are you the messiah or is there another it was a sarcastic statement it was not a question that required an answer john was not ignorant he was a prophet and when jesus had it jesus said i know what the problem is it's a weakness in men it's a weakness in pioneers it's a weakness in those who are trusted to pioneer certain moves listen what i'm teaching you is very deep you will listen to one message some years to come and you will cry when god sent you to a region where they do not know one tenth of the truths that god has taught you and for many years you become a celebrity and a mighty man and god begins to do mighty things in and through you and then one day you will hear and see of things that you were not involved with and you will see. this is the challenge oh, let me not go ahead of myself this is one of the major challenges with all due respect of fathers and senior colleagues in ministry because of the mighty things that god did in and through them and the dimensions that were introduced sincerely speaking not out of wickedness or whatever they were so emotionally connected to starting things that they believe that if god is ever to do anything it is impossible for them to not start it so when they hear that mighty things are happening and they don't seem to be involved they think it to their honor whereas john was not there when jesus commended him as the greatest prophet in other words as far as this move is concerned receive your crown. you have done a great job but let the program of god continue and if you are interested you will have to humble yourself and join that move provided you are not pioneering it I will show you those who got it right in the bible one of them was mary no woman as a virgin had ever gotten pregnant it was a new dimension now mary had a right to sit down and say my son jesus my this my that but when she discerned there was a new move she followed them to the upper room and waited quietly the mother of jesus among the 120 
who would receive the Holy Ghost was it not the, before some of them were born she had been relating with the Holy Ghost it was the Holy Ghost that got her pregnant and now she's coming to receive him in another dimension with humility you understand what I will teach you you will never miss any move of God if you don't get it there are moves that will leave you you will stand in shock it's not backsliding you will just say Lord when did this cloud pass me Mary got it right John did not it. John was offended I will show you that even Jesus got it right. He knew that his purpose was not just to come and remain on earth. He knew the timing. And even in advance, he began to tell them, I am not afraid of handing over. Because it is in handing over that my honor is multiplied. Listen. So Jesus is preparing the people. Watch this. And then he uses a very dangerous statement. It is expedient that I go. Ah. They said, no, you must remain here. You will be king. We eat bread. We like you. Remain. We like this kind of ministry. But he was saying, no, 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 no. I'm even coming to, I'm a bridge between the old and the new. You must be so desperate for God. That the position you occupy in the things of God should not matter. You must be so desperate for the things of God like Mary. You can give birth to Jesus and still join to wait. She was not the one leading praise and worship in the upper room. If Mary comes and sits in Koinonia now, I will give her the mic. I will just give her and sit down. What does it like to carry the word of God bodily for nine months? Mary, talk to us. Let's learn. I will hand over the ministry to Mary. There was no mention of her speaking. Imagine Mary was there among the 120. So Peter is praying. Remember Jesus told us that in 10 more days, the Holy Ghost will come and Mary is watching them. You know the level of humility it takes to be a mighty mover in a dimension sustain the humility to stand back there is an obsession in men to be known there is an obsession in men to be famous it's a weakness in men please listen back to our story so john is offended and makes a sarcastic statement go and ask jesus whether he's the messiah the same said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world now said go and verify jesus we are not sure again do you know what that message would have done to the disciples they would have said if prophet john is now doubting jesus it means we have to be careful it was a sarcastic way of saying be careful with that meeting be careful with that move <laughs> so when jesus had it he laughed he said go and the blind see this and that and the gospel is preached he said blessed is he that is not offended in me then the disciples were now at the center stage and one day listen carefully they heard that there were other people who were not part of their camp there was there were some powerful miracles happening somewhere and the disciples said jesus what is going on here and jesus laughed he said you guys want to make the mistake of john whoever is not against us whoever is not against us is for us they were so happy there was a time the the remember the mother of james and john she wanted to come and see him the disciples stopped her and said what is it we're in a move we're enjoying you see why they were angry when jesus said he was going they said well, what is all this one now so what is our own take on this you have created trouble for us and now you want to leave you are not going anywhere and jesus said no it is expedient that i go i'm going because you will now be on the center stage with the holy spirit and they refused jesus was secured enough to finish his assignment and to step back to say spirit of the living god these are the ones that represent the next move use them mightily 
I will still be glorified. I'm digressing to make this statement so that you will understand. I have seen a lot of people who started great things in the body and today they are not benefactors of the next move because their attachment and their ego will not give them the flexibility to blend into what God was doing. And so because they are, they are being inert in the next move of God will have to require an explanation. So they will fabricate an explanation that communicates error and they'll say forget about those people that's one of the reasons why so many people have insulted the prophetic today i know that the prophetic has its own errors i know if the prophetic has its own imbalances but many people because the dealings of god at that time did not open up to this dimension there are people for instance who will see what just happened here and say no way god does not move like this this is nonsense just because god did not move the way he was moving before does not mean he's not the one moving. The flexibility to discern the next move of God and that if you are interested, you open up your heart and say, Lord, I must not pioneer that move to join what you are doing. If it is God and it brings glory to you, I'm on my way going. It's a very difficult if you are a follower it's okay but if you are one who moves why will you see mary among the 120 sitting quietly i have looked for certain names who were once great names in the body in as much as the move of the spirit within their time was there and those names are almost silent and there has been no interest to find out what else is God doing and sometimes they have begun to teach that look anything that is outside the scope of what we know is nonsense that is a dangerous thing that is the mistake of John John would have followed Jesus quietly and he would have died honorably there would have been no reason for being beheaded in every crusade Jesus would have given him honor even the scribes were given honor as terrible where they never sat outside they sat inside they hated him but at least they followed they followed nicodemus came one day and said jesus let me tell you we are not stupid we know we know we see what you are doing we see the formation of a new move we know that you are a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him except god be with him i'm taking our time to establish this before we begin to build i just felt it strongly in my spirit to tell us do you know why i'm saying this zaria hear me you are a privileged place this is a place that god has put his hand very strongly and many people from here listen god is distributing people from this city across several places and you see when you get to some of those regions you will be surprised that as cheap as some of these revelations we trivialize are you will find out that some of those regions are in utter scarcity and you will be so relevant within a period and if you do not sustain the discernment to know what next when people come into that dimension and you don't know how to come up here you will be in big trouble you will become the biggest enemy to the next move of god alexander the way was a mighty mighty healing evangelist listen carefully he created what we call zion the zion city are we together now when you know then they didn't have internet and communication was not strong so you couldn't know what was happening in, in another part of the world the way was doing a mighty mighty work until a strange woman later appeared called maria woodward eater listen when maria woodward eater appeared she introduced a dimension of the move of god that they call presence evangelism 
that was when people would fall down like this and literally freeze in the same position for hours having heavenly encounters and she was a woman until then the way was not aware that something was happening at the other side of the world the day alexander the way heard it history has it this is confirmed alexander the way told everybody that this woman number one as a woman number two this dimension was occultism and he used his influence to fight that woman her first husband joined that conviction and fought her till he died the current move of god usually will be the biggest challenge to the next move of god the same way the law was the biggest challenge to the grace of god remember that the sanhedrin council started by the impartation of the spirit of moses upon 70 elders that's how it started eventually it had now become a religious place and when jesus came they could not even identify him so john had exhausted all his revelation within a dimension he had seen had john returned back john would never believe that there were higher dimensions but then the angel told him come up hither please prophesy to somebody say come up hither come up hither and i will show you the things that must happen I call what I just explained to you the tragedy of complacency that comes with a successful move of God. It is a complacency. It is, it is, it is weaved in men. It is a weakness in men. That when, when you are successful in executing God's desire for a season, usually the impetus to inquire lord can there be more will not be there because there are obvious evidences nobody can come and say you are not anointed nobody can say you are not intelligent the records are there to show that you are anointed the records are there to show you have built a great church the records are there to show you are mighty let me give you an instance in nigeria today the pattern of church growth is that there usually will be a central church like a headquarters is that true and then you will now have branches all together connected do you know that was not how it was before there was a move of god that brought that formation do you know what the next move is because many young people in our generation now every dimension you climb has the strategy for the move of god i'm not saying that is wrong you understand what i'm saying so the way god revealed to our fathers most of them you will find out that there is a central headquarters is that true that coordinates everything then there are branches around the world it was never like that in the history of nigeria in fact before that time the strategy was to have a small church and be dangerously anointed and just hide there like a seer and your job is to part and release people that was the strategy men like apostle babalola it was after his death that csc expanded like that the, the apostolic church and, and all of that when you read about them most of the great pioneers of the churches we have today especially around the west when they were the way they were they were small look at redeem for instance the founder they had not received the blueprint of establishment and expansion like that our fathers stayed with god and god said for this move that i am bringing this is the strategy i am revealing are you seeing that now but as wonderful as that is it can be dangerous for someone in our generation to just mechanically begin to envisage because in the next 20 years technology has taught us that you must be at the cutting edge of evolution the same way it is scientifically that's the same way it is spiritually so if in our generation your dream is to have branches in every state you are already at the verge of missing something serious because that is not the pattern that will come
we must be able to stay and say lord what is the pattern as at the time that move started there was no internet to agree so the advantage of connectivity was not there do you know what the move of god will be now that internet is an advantage that a man can sit in his room and be talking to the whole world it's dangerous to be where god was it's dangerous to be where God was he said holy holy is the Lord God Almighty who was who is and who is to come it's a dangerous thing to be where God was it's a dangerous thing to be involved in what God was doing you have to posture yourself to be relevant in what God is doing and what he's about to do your current level at your current spiritual level you can only see what God is doing that's the limit if you want to see the future you must come up here from revelations 1 to 3 there was nothing futuristic it was a revelation of things that were and the things that are the moment he wanted to see the next program of God he was asked to rise to a higher dimension if you're with me say amen. amen so we must trust god for grace to conquer what i call the tragedy of complacency please be careful when you are the greatest of your kind within a territory pray more fast more because the rest are waiting for you to move and if you don't move just like you they will stay and can i tell you something usually when the move of god comes all the followers are just faster because there is no embarrassment like the disciples of john it is usually you you see which is also another reason why listen men of god we must teach as though there is more in god it is dangerous that you are teaching doctrines doctrines will not change they are exact spiritual precepts given to the saints but when you are studying the life the character of god you must create a lot of flexibility and i'm the position of a student even before your members so that there is no embarrassment if and when you have to adjust to the things that god is doing if you're with me say amen mm. an arrival mentality is a dangerous mentality for a christian for a man of god an arrival mentality i've seen miracles i've seen signs i've seen wonders i've seen the move of god but could that could could it be that there's more in god than you've not seen now i'm going to make a very serious statement i want you to listen mention names is a father of faith that has gone to be with the lord respected voice in the body a great well, I call him great grandfather now Papa E. Hagen when you read Hagen's books and you see a lot of things that Hagen wrote you will know that Hagen was absolutely at the cutting edge of what God was doing at his time but when you read Papa Hagen's books with the lens of what God is doing now you will find a lot of gaps and the need for improvement which is proof he succeeded it's not proof that he's weak it's proof that he succeeded he left us a template a ladder to build upon it was papa hagin that wrote things like the anointing of the spirit the only medium that the anointing can move upon is a prayer cloth and he's right because he saw it in the bible but now we know that that is not absolutely true it was a dimension of truth that was seen based on him the anointing of the spirit is as limitless as god himself are you getting what i'm saying now it's very important let me tell you this i have seen visions of the coming move of god and i have been stretched myself because of the dimension of the things that will happen those dimensions will be fought tooth and nail when I say tooth and nail, there are dimensions that even 
as a strong believer you will need grace from god you will need to look well from the lens of scripture is the reason why god is grounding us on the word now so that when that dimension comes the your dexterity in the word will make you believe. <laughs> listen to what i'm telling you there are things we have not yet seen on earth that must happen before christ comes the bible records it there are dimensions we have only spoken about the prophet said it if as i'm standing here right now you just see this mic on the table and i'm out i'm gone by this night an internet is going to say finally exposed the voodoo power even from this example some of you are already afraid for me apostle don't do it oh you see let me tell you this yet we read in the bible that the spirit took philip and told him to join the chariot of a man not in a vision a man dematerialized entered the realm of the spirit reformed back and stayed on a chariot and the eunuch was afraid he didn't run away he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this he told nathaniel that you will see heavens opened and the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man let me tell you this the miracles that have stretched us now and the dimensions of the power and the word of god will be child's play compared to the things that god has because the pride of men and this cosmos there must be the introduction of something so divine and powerful to bring the kings to their knees this current level cannot bring the kings to their knees again you can what you call now the move of god go to dubai go to singapore go to the u.s and challenge them they will look at you and say stupid this is what you came to tell me let me tell you the truth we are not going to win the world just by charity i believe in charity don't get me wrong but right now the church is beginning to be so afraid they don't have any other superior result so they just have to blend to feed the poor so that that's the only condition to be accredited by non-christian organizations that the, the world's interpretation of the church's relevance is feeding the poor and hungry and i don't have a problem with it but they are reducing us so everybody is now saying look it looks like the court the in thing now if you don't want to be criticized quietly find orphans or find widows buy sewing machine and color or something just share and snap and the world will say well done this is what you the colder you are the more the world says well done we are now seeing what you are doing there are tv programs today that will not air koinonia like this with what happened no way no way with the move of god like this someone shouting <clears throat> you are creating controversy that will make the regulatory agencies get into trouble like i said if you're a new believer tonight you will need extra grace from god that's why i, I pre-warned you already ahead of time we need something more than what we have now to bring the arrogance of the kings of the earth let me tell you they have prosperity they have health do you know that most of what we claim the power of god does we don't even have it well mention three or four things the only thing that the church now in as much as we know can boast of one salvation two the personal communion of the holy spirit three the peace that surpasses all understanding but as far as anything earthly is concerned and the things i just mentioned are the things we don't emphasize most of the things we emphasize are the things we cannot defend so we talk a lot about the miraculous and while we are making all that noise someone in dubai has discovered a way of just making what we will do as a miracle cheap and they will soon make it easy and if that happens we're going to be in trouble because a day will come on a crusade ground 
just sharing a fence will be a free medical outreach with sophisticated machines and those who are not healed in our meetings will just enter there quickly and in five minutes they are giving when that happens i'm not being sarcastic when that happens let me tell you something will go wrong because one day the government can shut down a church and say we have examined and we cannot see your relevance the church is more than a charity organization it is our fear and our inability to rise higher we have a, remember there was a time where the healing ministry the prophetic and all these things was cast on earth the world had not caught up with that dimension so if you had it you could shine but not now not now put a poster and put a wheelchair up nobody could dare question a miracle before but right now someone will come in that crusade ground you will think he came to be blessed he's videotaping everything from your face to the person on the wheelchair they will go and examine the person and say was that leg going to work anyway or was it your prayer that made it work if i have malaria and i've started taking anti-malaria and i'm on day four and you pray for me was i going to be healed anyway or was it the prayer that brought it this is the judgmental spirit that our generation has in the days of our fathers nobody will ask that question it will be on paper mighty things are happening and a crowd now mighty things draw criticism our generation let me tell you this ask some of our parents who are here there were many things that they knew that was not the best but they had an unflinching loyalty for the voices in their time nobody would dare stand up and question a man of god if they were not satisfied they will leave him and go home and pray for him remember that talk of pray for him right now a man can be preaching and a young man can stand up and say sir what you are saying no and create a debate there welcome to a new level of living where if we don't get the strategy for now we will be in trouble are we together thank god for prosperity but of the forbes hundred richest people i'm not sure there are up to 10 of them who are tongue stems so using physical wealth to bring the world to his knees is almost a failed project because there are some of these people who have given 95 percent of their wealth i'm not aware of any believer who has done that now i may be wrong but i'm not aware it means he must take something more than money if it's education the best institutes in the whole world are not christian institutes my brothers and my sisters let me tell you whether it's research whether it's medicine whether it's whatever we have to be honest if it's in the term in terms of well-meaning uh, civilization and all of that go to hedonistic nation that have no for god and look at level of development infrastructure you look at all of these things many of them are already the future of africa in the next 30 years now what then will bring the kings of today's world to their knees when moses went with a rod to meet pharaoh pharaoh said nonsense you left the wilderness to come and show me a rod to become a snake i am pharaoh you show me more We can sing songs and fall down in the church congratulations but let me tell you we need to take something out that can bring the kings to their knees in babylon babylon was a place of wizardry there was something that happened with daniel there was something that happened with shadrach meshach and abednego that made the king to testify the king passed a decree unanimously that nobody should bow to any other god again except the god of shadrach meshach and abednego are we blessed we must receive grace to not ever believe that what we have seen is all there is we must obtain grace please hear me if you history here thank god for the wonderful things but you must obtain grace 
the second point on what i want to talk about tonight i'm just charging your mind the first i, I put it as the tragedy of complacency and arrival mentality the second is a condition that must be needed and met in a life if you will ever attract the hand of god that will take you to a higher dimension is called hunger and thirst it's not enough to be ready to move to another level hunger and thirst are accurate measures of your spiritual health the same way when a patient is sick one of the symptoms in most cases is that you lose appetite when you lose appetite spiritually something is wrong matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness it says that they will be filled hunger and thirst john chapter 7 and verse 37 let's read it very quickly boy my time is gone john 7 and verse 37 look up please in the last day the great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink if you do not thirst you can stay with what i've given with all the days but in this new day i have been visiting you but on this last day if you are still thirsty come listen listen and understand what he's saying remember that it was not the first day the last day they had benefited from all the other days but in the last day he said if any man thirst let him come you have enjoyed the move of god before you have seen the hand of god before you have seen the grace of god before you have seen the sick healed before and god is saying in 2019 if there is any man that still thirsts if there is any church that is still thirsty come koinonia if you still believe there is more and you desire come that means if you are not thirsty you can go it's all right if any man thirst let him come hunger and thirst powerful without hunger and thirst there is no appetite and there is no desire for more of god teaching you hear me tell you tonight if you don't hunger after it will not make sense you want to listen to something else this is a teaching for people who know that there can be more this is a teaching for many people who know that lord I've seen you or oh, i've seen you do a lot of things but i know that there is more in you there is more in you this was the mistake of lucifer lucifer saw a dimension of god he was the custodian the librarian of heaven and by the strength of everything he saw he believed he had exhausted all there was in god and then he wanted to rise to run a parallel government with god and there was judgment in heaven and he was brought to his knees that was why when god was recreating man it surprised him didn't know that those possibilities were there they were not captured in the truths that were given to him reproduction multiplication through reproduction had never happened it was creation now that a man one man can meet with his wife and have a child that will own ah said something is wrong and so the angels came to meet with the daughters of men to use that strategy to create something else hunger and thirst one of my prayers a man of god every time i said lord please you know i've shared it with you here lord do not show me the extent of my impact it's my prayer and i'm saying it even as i'm preaching here just give me a token let me just see a bit of what you are using me to do and i'm grateful and i'm satisfied let me tell you if you think fame cannot influence you think again mm. was it not the same alexander the way that went to a tailor went to a fashion designer
to sew just mantle with the cap that kind of prophet chef cap he sold everything and tied his ghetto behold elijah he read the bible and said this man is me now what is this what have, what has he done that i'm not doing they first started saying you are elijah they know no all glory be to the lord but the time came they said you are elijah it's true there are things you will not believe now keep rising tomorrow they will say it and you will believe it how do you think people become jesus i don't mean image of jesus likeness of jesus some gentlemen came here one time from Kano. remember those that those jesus guys and the apostles now i say i don't know if you are here but they came some gentlemen immediately after service and one of them came for altar call as soon as they were done i just saw the gentleman he said he's was it judas one was judas one was jesus and this young man came from Kano. as soon as i saw them i gave them a big hug i said look uh, my, my jesus friend let me tell you something you are in the image listen please i'm teaching you are in the image of christ yes are we together you have attained oneness with christ based on the doctrine of the gospel yes you are in christ one with christ yes are we together now the holy spirit represents the presence of jesus in your life yes but that you are jesus in terms of replacement you are not like that do you think that guy got born again like that not seen people pray under a tree for many weeks and by the fifth week they left that tree mad with strange revelations from beings that were not of earth pride is a dangerous thing fame has a side effect when you begin to clap for you sometimes it becomes embarrassing to step back and let jesus be seen because spotlight is sweet oh oh mine mediocre spotlight can can bless your children's children so when the spotlight is on you you plan to be there forever so that when you shift your child too will be there when you shift your grandchild too will be there but there are times when jesus says that you decrease that you will increase and many times it is embarrassing you know i go for meetings and when i see the mighty things that god is doing or sometimes when i'm teaching and the teaching grace is really on me i see the shock and the wonder on the people and i say oh dear don't be deceived you're only watching a puppet there is one behind me may i never be ashamed to let the world know that i am nothing without him this is not just some humility creed there are many proud people who say this thing i'm saying it's very true you must get to a point in your life where you are not ashamed to stand back and tell the people it is jesus jesus ever jesus only he says and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men to myself let's get back to what we're discussing hunger and thirst there are times as a man of god come it will be embarrassing at your spiritual level to now join the flock to kneel down and cry for his a greater dimension you kneeling down for the flock can kneel down i'm kneeling down this guy is standing <laughs> are we together watch this a time a time can come huh when everybody is crying for more people are rolling on the ground and saying lord search my heart and as a man of god it's not any personality difference you would let them to the throne room and you are just standing there there's no need because you have become the throne room yourself you see deception is subtle so you will tell them to fast and you too you will not fast what is the need i mean whether i fast or not you see that if you want to be captured in every move of god same hunger that made you climb a tree like a monkey and held on to one branch and cried there and said god i will not come down from this tree except you bless me and god said come down i will show you what you want to see if that same hunger is not there now you can stay in a five-star hotel listen 
now you have all kinds of entourage do you know sometimes i look at my life today and i thank god for what god has done many times there are times that i wish that i had my life back in the days when nobody knew me fame can be destructive even to your spiritual life i can't go out freely i can't eat freely i can't be myself you see that i can't stroll out to just enjoy what god is doing if someone there catches me there instead of coming to join the line now that i've seen him let me just quickly it's a very embarrassing life it looks like fame but it's dangerous time today is a luxury you must intentionally sometimes close the door to some of this comfort and retreat back listen to me and say lord this is still your boy of before again oh they now call me apostle joshua selman but this is still your boy again and god says are you still as hungry as before he say hungrier than before oh god after the miracles yes sir after the fame yes sir And then he says, now I will take you and show you higher things. Hunger can be discerned. And let me tell you this. If you're a man of God, please listen. Your congregation will be a reflection of your hunger. The moment you become complacent, that impartation will come on them. They will strangely find out that the grace is no longer there. Everybody say hunger. almost 80 to 85 percent of the time if you meet me if i'm not studying i'm listening to a message or something there are times i just return from a ministration right there just entering my hotel room you would think i should lie down and cross my leg i started playing a message before i quickly went to go and preach now that i'm back thank god for the mighty things sincerely god is my witness there are a few times that i think about a meeting and what happened once i leave that place it's all right if you ever ask me how is the meeting the only thing you will hear is fine doesn't matter what happened the answer is fine that's it one of the mighty things that happened here fine a few times some of you send me pictures and clips of what happened and i look at it whoa you mean this what happened lord i give you praise let's continue do you know why because you see you prepared for today yesterday you don't prepare for tomorrow tomorrow you prepare for tomorrow today they are celebrating what you did yesterday if you are not doing anything today there will be nothing to celebrate tomorrow listen to me you have to learn this those who win olympic as soon as they are done they rest for a while go on a vacation one month and they're already preparing for the next olympic champions don't rest champions move not in a competitive manner there is more in god listen to me you are not going to clap for me now because someone fell under the anointing you may do that for your president in your small fellowship you're not going to say glory be to god koinonia was powerful because someone was shaking no there are testimonies today that if you hear in another church you will stand up and clap i watch here somebody would give a very big testimony and coin up now people just clap one hand and say is this it go and sit down we want something more and you are right you are right you are right because your capacity is being expanded that means yesterday's food will not feed you give an adult a baby's food and you say this is for what the baby is grateful for having it but the adult is still hungry don't you know that the more you grow the more the nourishment must be strong in size and quality the burden of being at the cutting edge of god's move will require you to be listen listen that hunger must remain in you that hunger must remain in you you see all the wonderful things that just happened when the, the meeting just started I go back to God let me tell you something with me and God 
there are few times and i want to be very sincere with you god is in this place there are few times where god comments on any meeting that i've gone to no this is the realm of champions you don't talk like mediocres i don't come back to god and god says ah son you did a great job in that crusade what for no let's continue the training like a coach looks at an athlete you are the best in the field and after they snap you and do everything the coach is watching you not in anger he's impressed and once you come he says go and change your clothes wait for me in the field it's proof of his love you have conquered that standard and he takes you higher this is what happened to david david was so david exhausted the realm of his generation and rose up into another realm and began to see the coronation of the messiah the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand no other prophet saw that it was david that understood the excellency of the spirit the spirit was never given without measure to people please listen and now david had got it he said cast me not away from your presence take not other prophets were comfortable with the holy spirit going and coming david said but i've seen that a move of god will come when this grace the spirit will come and stay lord can i not enter that move hunger hunger took david to the secret place as a king the palace did not mean anything to him he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper i'd rather be an usher let me be an usher the next move than to be a lord in the former move hunger and thirst for you try and weary land I hunger and thirst for you Try and feel your land For all I want is you miracles in spite of the revelations i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land yeah. sing it from your heart all i want is you lord thank you for the revelations Thank you for the miracles, for the word of knowledge, the prophetic. But Lord, I thank you for yesterday's wine. But I need the wine of today and tomorrow. I hunger and thirst. Try and weary land. Try and weary Listen, you must trust God for your secret place to have such a high standard that no matter what you are doing currently, when you get back to the secret place, you will see that it's a step out of the... If your bar is too small, pride will kill you. If your bar is too small, one successful program will kill you. That's why you see all these young guys. Listen, listen. Sometimes I talk to them and I encourage them. Don't let successful programs enter you. Don't let successful concerts enter you. Are you seeing that? There are people whose spiritual lives went down. There are people who could not pursue and seek after God again. The next move of God. Success can depreciate your pace. Because when you are motivated by a need to hit a standard. Listen. It will give you an impetus. But where there is no where there is nothing to prove again there is no hunger
when you go for a meeting today whether you say god bless you and leave nobody will ever say oh he doesn't have revelation oh come on the track record is there nobody will ever say oh he cannot heal that's why he just did altar call and sat down when you are starting out in ministry the pressure to make your calling and election choice upon you so even in five minutes you want to do everything at once you want to prophesy you want to give word of knowledge you want to heal you want to share the latest revelation but as god begins to crown your 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 your, your life with undeniable graces and honor you get to a point where the pressure to rise is not there and it shows that you have plateaued it shows that you have arrived but when your hunger remains ah. when i was preparing this message i was praying for my own self i said lord my hunger should be larger than every anybody's own in this ministry otherwise how can i lead hunger i've prayed more but show me something else about prayer i've seen your power before but show me the one I've not seen. I've seen your anointing. But show me something else. I have seen the spirit of revelation. But show me something else. I have seen angels. But show me another dimension. At the apex of his apostolic ministry. Look at a man's hunger. That I may know him. That I may know him. Paul. I hope you know the doctrine of scripture starts from the writings of paul the acts of the apostles down to revelation the gospels do not contain doctrines no the doctrines of scripture are embedded there some of them were just shadows as presented paul single-handedly wrote to third do you know what it means for a man to create the study curriculum of the church it was not just jesus that wrote it Paul sat down and wrote to thirds. The, the limit of our spiritual growth is scripture. That is the boundary given to us for growth. And a man sat down by the spirit and wrote it. Yet when that man finished writing it, he said that I may know him. That I may know him. Oh God that I may know you. That I may know you. I have seen your power but that I may know you. A man of God said he went for a pastor's conference one time and Pastor E.A. Adeboye was there. And when it was time for all the men of God to pray, he said he wanted to lie down close to him to hear what kind of prayer a man at this realm would pray. And he said when he lay down all through for more than one hour, all that he was saying is mercy, mercy Lord, mercy, mercy Lord mercy the young minister there is in power power lord result open doors oh god offering send helpers that 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 small kiosk like building must be completed whereas there is a man here with kilometers as an estate and his language and his desire mercy he has learned that one of the most important things is the mercy of god Are you getting what I'm telling you now? Hunger. Hunger. If you're a pastor here, please minimize just praying for power and cry for hunger. Go back and buy the same new notebooks you bought that the spirit of revelation came to honor it. You have stopped buying it. Go and buy them again. Go and find a place where you used to sit alone with God. I'm too busy. I have counseling to do. I have mentees and sons in ministry. And you would die there. And they will go to the next move. Because they are followers. Hmm. Matter, matter. You are worried and obsessed about many things. But one thing is needful. To sit at the master's feet. Please listen to me. The things you did. That brought you to this realm go back and start creating the atmospheres for them again 
hear what I'm telling you this is not the issue of I'm a big man now no 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 I have my notebooks you see my notebooks I can I can gather all of them for you from the time I started working with God when I go for retreats I go with all of them all of them Lord what did you say my God look at what you said I bought new ones for tomorrow I buy it like this and I show the Lord I say Lord see it your student is here again packs of viral I'm ready because if you are not ready to hear and listen and write he's not ready to speak the level that koinonia is right now is already exhausted there i'm already preparing and aligning for the next seasons not today the preparation of yesterday brought us to where we are today thank god for what god is doing around the world through this ministry but my brothers and my sisters is child's play and if we remain complacent clapping we will become like the old wine we must be at the cutting edge of god's move through hunger genuine hunger oh that we will have men and women of god again who will organize program for others but for yourself you organize a program with the same energy for others for yourself hunger next point my time is up my god you want to come up higher in the spirit You will need an encounter with the spirit of prayer and supplication please write it down this is one of the dimensions where the prayer ministry is irreplaceable if it is the next level and the next move of god there is no there is nothing you will do to replace the ministry of prayer Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Please write it quickly. Call on to me and I will answer. The revelation is an answer. It's a response. I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that are not yet captured in your experience. Call on to me. Call on to me. Let me tell you something I've observed. And I, I say this respectfully. And I think it's a correction that the body of Christ needs to get there are few believers who pray for edification most believers have left the ministry of edification to prayer most of our prayer is either warfare or request there's nothing wrong with warfare there's nothing wrong with request but let me tell you the dimension of the growth dimension of prayer is for edification where you don't enter the place of prayer with a prayer request where less than five percent of your prayer is in english you are not just entering to harass god you are not just entering to say lord there are powers sitting on my destiny leave destiny the goal is edification and you feel the growth you feel the stretching from your spirit man very few believers pray for edification you can know it because you stand near them they are weak as weak as whatever they love god but their capacity is weak strength is discernible is why we fall off over everything you don't get this miracle you don't get that miracle you harass god all around but there is a level of strength and stability please hear me the next move of god will come on the wings of genuine prayer thank god for miracle service don't get me wrong there is a place of supplication and all of that and there is a place of intercession for others but can i tell you this those who were here many years ago in zaria will tell you there were few times when many people today that are greatly used by god around there were few times where people took out time to actually pray for their own request believers who gather and just are praying no prayer point no prayer request is towards the end of the prayer they'll just say lord just to let you know we have not eaten 
and we trust your grace for supplies just to let you know that we have this 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 issue but the average believer right now prays but our prayer does not bring the level of growth and stamina because that prayer is largely driven by lust the need for things so i can go to pray and spend six hours there correct well done but that six hours is almost five hours of harassing god when will the power come oh god is that prayer that's inquiry you've not started praying there are few believers who can who can pray if a request is not if a prayer point is not raised you want them to pray you have to raise a prayer point say this then they say so oh, i now follow and I'm pray it turn it into a prayer point but when you say let's pray they just stand and say so what should we do now and other people are praying and they are just watching but when it's all right everybody stand up lord jesus lord jesus my life my life this and that this and that i'm not saying anything is wrong with that but have you learned the edification ministry of prayer the edification ministry to the point it used to be a big deal to be filled with the holy ghost if you were not filled with the holy ghost it was as if you were naked when believers gather by yourself you will find one brother and say sorry can you pray for me it used to be a project but right now there are believers who can be in a place for many years they know about being filled with the holy spirit and they don't argue it but they have not seen the need they just feel one day if it happens let me just be filled capacity capacity there are set there are certain levels of grace and anointing that is a waste to come to you it's like pouring a drum of water inside a cup it doesn't make any sense you need to expand please tell somebody expand 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 you don't expand by preaching you don't expand by going for ministration you don't expand just by by doing bible study for others you don't expand by conducting deliverance for others no you have to lock yourself lock yourself look at jesus the word of god filled with the holy spirit while others are sleeping they are the ones who need him he will get up in the morning and pray for hours it was a daily habit to the point that when it was time for him to go to the cross from the communion the upper room he branched gethsemane and prayed there he spake a parable to the end prayer is an instrument that we can use to correct anomalies i agree but please hear me learn to get into the place of prayer without prayer points the prayer point is you the prayer point is you many of those things will be answered when you are answered the prayer point is you there are many many requests that are a revelation of weakness when you access strength with god you will check and not find the prayer points again and you are looking at time you are not praying you are praying you you pop tom tom you are not praying five minutes you know let me tell you this god loves everybody but he rewards seriousness god rewards seriousness there are pastors who are like that every two minutes you are leaking something or swallowing something there are times that you go to pray my brothers and my sisters you don't know whether you are on earth or you are in heaven you don't know it's a realm there are many things about prayer when it's said most believers don't know because that is a progression in a realm that you must get to for that thing to make sense we must pray our weaknesses are becoming very glaring we must pray for capacity 
in fact most people never sought anointing it was a byproduct of some of these things they didn't even know that anointing was to be sought directly now all and sundry you see a lazy people around crying for benny Hinn's grace in in the secret place five minutes lord a, a double portion of what is on benny Hinn. Let it, and God is trying to say, no, no, no. I can give you just I don't want any. He, who, you know, if you are God, you give good gifts to those who love you. And God said, this is not how it works. Have regard for Benny, not just God. You want a double portion of his anointing, and you are there five minutes snoring back. Five minutes snoring back. No. revive your prayer life revive your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life please hear me revive the edification dimension of your prayer life don't just pray needs don't just pray warfare pray to grow pray to grow that's how many of us enter the realms of visions it was not a conscious request you pray your way till you break the gate that closes this realm and the next realm prayer like a system of transport revive your prayer life say amen there are men of God who don't pray. They are praying for me. That's a deception. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Let me tell you this. If you are a man of prayer and you are edified through prayer, there is a signature that, that the strength and the health of your spirit man is written upon you. Are we together now your communication and everything shows that there is a track record of prayer you can stand on stage and mumble tongues and people look and the, the scarceness you know that this one is just is just it's not just the huskiness of your voice there is a it, it, the deep calls on to deep people know that this one mm -mm, you have you have is like creating a hole there is a a position your leg can stand in prayer when you find a widespread congregation not praying, it's because the leaders don't pray. You only transfer to people out of the abundance of the grace that is on you. Please learn to pray. Don't pray when you have a meeting. This is what people do. When they have conferences, they now organize imaginary um, um, five or seven days prayer i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but if you have to wait for a program to pray you will never be powerful in this world everybody say prayer i'll find a place to stop so that we can continue a man of god said something that blessed me i think it was dr paul enenche I heard something that he said I, I scrabbled it somewhere and it it blessed me I said boy I was going to share this I can I can I can't find it again but I think he was talking around the fact that it was it was something about prayer how that when prayer changes you then everything that belonged to the old you will have to go with the old you because you are now changed are you seeing that now yes it's like changing an house. i don't need to carry the tree that was in my former house i didn't like it so i left the house the tree goes with it when you are changed many requests change too he spoke a parable listen the church started on the wings of prayer and we must pray we must pray those listening to me please pray it doesn't matter what nation you are in pray you don't have to be the president of anything to pray right now this obsession about coordinator i'm the coordinator of a prayer group so i pray if you pray because you are a coordinator you are a hypocrite coordinator 
get yourself behind a tree coordinate yourself behind a door and sit down and pray if there's no space in your house use your bathroom use your toilet lock up that place and pray stroll out in the night and pray you don't have to shout and harass the people there but pray if your bed is uncomfortable stand up from it stand up from it don't pray one leg is on the ground 20 or 40 percent of your body is on the bed and you are praying god knows you are weak he doesn't leave you weak he gives you strength prove that you have received it by standing up you don't have to have a bad dream then you wake up and say you don't know, i will show you that i'm a member of koinonia Shaka, ta, 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 ta. no 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 make deposits of that prayer so that while you are sleeping the prayer is like you praying there are people who are praying even when they are not praying yeah their prayer has created a prayer motion that even in their sleep prayer is going on their prayer has become a portal for angelic activities they don't have to pray for it to start call on to me call on to me call on to me Zechariah chapter 12 we'll stop here and pray we'll continue next week Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10 come up here through prayer verse 10 Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10 and it shall come to pass in that day said the Lord and I will pour upon the house of David the house of Koinonia and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourned for this and that and that and that the spirit of grace and supplication is a spirit that comes upon you to pray if you pray only because you are in prayer band you are not a prayer warrior a prayer warrior is not somebody what is who is a warrior remove prayer a warrior boxer our lens every day a warrior chef cooks every day whether there's an appointment or not a warrior lecturer teaches every day a prayer warrior prays every day if a prayer warrior prays only when there are people there so that they will hear your voice you are doing exactly what the scribes were doing the scribes and the pharisees were never called prayer warriors they were called hypocrites are we together will take 10 minutes or so to pray come up here new dimensions in the spirit Prayer. hallelujah before we pray just cry in one minute Lord Thank you for what you have done at this level but baptize me with a fresh hunger a hunger that swallows up every achievement that has been wrought in God in my life thank you oh God for the people I have mentored but a fresh hunger pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger culminating into passion not just passion for studying books not just passion for studying the Bible not just passion for going to church not just passion for serving in the house of God passion to pray not just praying and asking praying and growing praying and rising are you praying Honga o God, Honga o God, Honga o God, Honga o God, Honga o God.
Challenge pride. Challenge the deceptiveness of fame. The deceptiveness of fame glory. Thank you Lord for these things you have done. But I cry for hunger. I cry for a test. To understand what you are saying next. To understand what you are doing next. Parago shalakata. Embreka teka teka topa karot. Hallelujah. 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 In the next maybe five to ten minutes. I just want you to blast in tongues you are not challenging any demon you are not asking god to give you anything no tea no bread no anointing no ministry you are praying for your edification that your spirit man be built Enlarge your capacity in the spirit. Enlarge your vision in the spirit. Enlarge discernment in the spirit. Shanabash, rakata barakata de prakatelech. Sham prato sekete la karanta skaparu seketa. Empros ke marato shelekato sebret. Shekete ke 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 bos ke prato skaparu sesia bakata. Empro na sadash kala pros ke ne bahashale mabos.
the spirit of grace and supplication makata barandas kabarekos e pretekatele kato praskata balakata the body the flesh may be weak but i tell you the spirit is willing willing to go to a higher dimension willing to go to a higher phase willing to come up to a level where you will see the things that must happen be a man of God. You don't have to be a woman of God. You don't have to be a deacon. You just need to be one hungry and passionate for another dimension higher than that which you have seen. Elena Sana Makaratos, Eleva Rusa Zenekali Adabarash. worshippers don't receive songs because they don't pray many worshippers write songs they wax album but they don't pray 
one of the proof of a healthy prayer life is the reception of spiritual songs let me tell you you don't have to be a musician there is a dimension of prayer that you get to you must receive melodies in the spirit you must you may forget it after the prayer but you will need it as a ladder to keep climbing i tell you why many there are stale songs in the church because many of them are composed composed by an appetite to generate revenue there are people who used to sleep with guitars and keyboards and they will lie down and play for hours 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 that's how to be a worshiper that's how to bring songs from heaven i tell you why many preachers are not fresh they quickly open their bible and browse on youtube and browse on the internet you prepare your sermon not by studying prayer creates the coordination on what to study if you sit down with a notebook and you just feel i know what to say oh i'm teaching about this no you carry your notebook you carry this when i go to bed my bible follows me my books i'm on one side my bible is there my laptop is there my phone is there everything that helps my spiritual life lies down the bed with me you don't prepare a message by going on youtube you prepare a message by going to the secret place you pray and pray and you get to a point where your spirit man begins to zoom around a central thought that the spirit is speaking you see that and that's how series upon series will come out if you if you do ministry and preach just by looking for sermons per week you will not last one month you will not have anything to say again before the time of prayer you may not even know what to share in a conference what to share in this book you just pray prayer is powerful prayer is powerful prayer is powerful we are going to pray just two minutes this is a request now you are going to say lord the grace and the stamina in the place of prayer baptize me afresh with it don't say i'm a woman no don't say i'm a man don't say i'm elderly don't say i'm a child don't say i'm a career person baptize me oh god the grace for prayer the interest for prayer the unbeatable advantage of a life that can be edified through prayer there is no limit for a man that can pray prayer is not everything but as far as the dimension of a man's rising to access new lands in the spirit no you must pray tell you this listen listen prayer is an amplifier of every virtue you have anything is amplified in prayer revelation plus prayer is higher revelation speed plus prayer is greater speed wisdom plus prayer is superior wisdom strength plus prayer is greater strength prayer amplifies everything don't stop
top at spiritual potentials they are there but fan them to flames the prophetic is there it will remain as a potential until prayer crushes everything and brings the wine out of it one of the ways you make your calling and your election choice by prayer pray parents teach your children to pray don't just teach your children to study teach them to pray little wonder the number one thing being fought in schools is prayer not yet study prayer let no day pass without you praying there is no reason for it don't do it as a ritual but please do it no matter how busy you are once it's six o'clock or seven or eight or nine your mind tells you breakfast once it's 12 or one or two or three your mind says lunch once it's six or seven or eight your mind says dinner indoctrinate your spirit man to be that sensitive the moment is morning you know it's like a register you need to sign listen let me tell you when we started out we never went to bed till we prayed once it was evening seven o'clock eight most believers already knew it was time to pray it didn't matter what even if there was no corporate prayer our phone and social life was in a place of prayer once it's 6 30 7 7 38 you start seeing people one by one you will see a tiny lady with her socks and her rechargeable playing one song she's smuggling herself to one corner to go and pray later you see that girl come out there, there were people who did this non-stop for years they didn't know they were powerful till the day they told them can you share in a little fellowship as soon as they stood their fire you don't do ministry by appointment it was while they prayed and fasted that the holy ghost says separate separate separation comes in the place of prayer it was while they prayed and fasted the holy ghost says separate one week you've not prayed you are all right three days you've not prayed you are all right two days you've not prayed it's okay no problem you know how nigeria is i will, I will pray the other time it's an attack you must trust God for grace to pray. Like I said, many of us, it's not like we're not praying. But our prayer is largely warfare and demand. Warfare and demand. So we get to the secret place with different requests. Oh God, do this. Oh God, do this. Oh God, do this. We just water it down with tongues five, ten minutes and we're done. That may not be bad. But you are not going to be mighty that way. You want to come up here you must spend time and time means hours it may not be the same capacity every day but the goal is consistency consistency let me tell you this if you pray a whole day and the next time you pray again is three weeks you will not grow did you hear what i said if you pray 10 hours one day because of a program or seven days of seven days prayer and fasting then the next time you really take out time to pray is two weeks you do it like that you will not grow the key is the constant connection constantly father we thank night we thank you because you are guiding us into your program into the place of power oh how we need your power how we need your grace your very own it's because you live jesus i live i have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you live, Jesus, I need to pray.
Holy Spirit, we thank you for your ministry in this place tonight. You are here to glorify Jesus again and even to glorify the saints. We humble ourselves, we submit to your wisdom, and we ask, O oh God, that your word will find expression unrestrained. I pray that your ministry of making men will proceed unhindered tonight. I decree, O oh God, and I declare that every single one of us will leave this place transformed, will leave this place edified, and will leave this place with our expectations met. Thank you again because of the confidence we have in both your presence and your ability. We decree and declare that forever Jesus and him alone be glorified in this place. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around again. Please pick up your notebooks. Let's get to the teaching for tonight. Come up hither, part two. We're rounding up. Um... I've been thinking very carefully about the subject of transformation. I really have been passionately thinking about the subject of transformation. I am convinced that any man of God that lacks the ability to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming men um, should not be in ministry. This is my honest opinion. Number two, I believe that any platform, whether a church, a fellowship, where the presence of God cannot prevail over men to bring them first into conformity to the image of the Christ and second, to be able to bring them into the reality of their inheritance in Christ, that place deserves to be shut. It does not qualify to be called a church or any kind of gathering whatsoever. Praise the Lord. So all the teachings that we bring here are designed to achieve many things. Um, you must understand. Number one, designed to help us know God. It matters to God. It also matters to me that we know God, that our knowledge of God continues to progress it's important to know God it really is important to know God because in the knowledge of God is our confidence please listen in the knowledge of God is our stability if your knowledge of God is very low you will not be able to survive today's world are we together it matters. Thank God for the wonderful testimonies, but the pride of the believer, according to scripture, is not in the acquisition of things. Please listen very carefully. Whether you have a car, whether you have a house, whether a door was opened, whether you get married, whether your wife gives birth to quadruplets, all these wonderful things, as interesting as they are, they are truly um secondary matters the real pride of the believer is your knowledge of god no matter what you have if you do not know god you don't have anything it's difficult to understand this because we need most of the things we chase but i'm telling you by and large the real pride of the believer is your knowledge of god let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. He says, let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So the messages are designed to give us encounters, to increase our conviction about the person of God. Number two, the messages are designed to show us God's methodologies. You, you have to write this. 
the teachings are designed to open us up to what we call the ways of God. His methodologies, the way he operates. This, this, this camera man is operating this camera through knowledge. He knows how the camera works. It's not enough to be given the camera as a gift. You must know how it works. Are we together now? Both of them are standing behind their various gadgets on the strength of knowledge. No one will just get up out of zeal and stand behind the camera. They will not be able to do anything much. It matters not only that we know God, but that we understand his ways. I will continue to repeat this until you are well indoctrinated with this truth. That the knowledge, please listen, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his person, is infinite it will take us eternity to really know god but the knowledge of his ways as far as our excelling in this life is concerned they are finite they can be learned they can be known and you can apply them it takes a fool to believe god will put infinite methodologies to continue to learn as far as our excelling is concerned no the keys that we need to excel in life are finite. You can hold them and know that these are the keys given to men to excel. So the messages are designed to show us, to cause us to see. Number three. The messages are designed to allow the Holy Spirit to invade our lives and produce dimensions of results in and through our lives that only God can produce. The messages are like ushers. So it is not unusual that whilst the message is coming, the Holy Spirit is just moving in the midst of his people bringing deliverance, bringing healing, bringing breakthroughs. The messages were designed to be conducive for the operation of the Spirit. There are certain things that cannot be taught. There are experiences that only the might of God can produce. This is the limitation of the teaching ministry when it is done purely from a religious standpoint. It will only end up educating people there are some results that do not depend on education. People need to encounter the power of God and have situations in their lives change immediately. Praise the Lord. There are believers who come before God with emergencies. They don't need to learn any law. They don't need to learn any principle. They can learn when the situation has been solved the urgency will not allow them to give god their attention so you're not going to bring you're not going to help them by trying to say oh you are in a situation you know listen listen um you'll be learning a lot today you hear people say things like miracle alert and all of that um god's idea is not to keep you in the realm of alert you know that um you're not going to be able to feed your family just with alert but that there are people who are in situations where it's a waste to give them any book on wealth. The urgency at that point requires a miracle here and now. And so God must be allowed to step in and let them experience his hand. And then when they are at ease, they can now sit down and learn the ways of God that makes for sustainable results. If every miracle comes just through the understanding of principles alone, then many believers will die and never live to learn all they need to be victorious. God is that merciful to solve your problems while you learn. God is that merciful to let you experience his power while you are growing. We cannot... We, we can't peg everybody to receive results only at their level of transformation. It is dangerous. Because there are people who, um, they are where they are not because of anything of themselves. They have come from backgrounds 
that will not allow them let me give you an instance a man of 60 70 years intellectually speaking his rate of assimilation will be a lot slower than a young man of 20 to 25 is that true and so if God is to allow that man learn and know everything about breakthrough to experience breakthrough that man will probably need the next 10 or 15 years of consistent mentorship so unique to that man's condition he will experience a dimension of God's mercy that only his age range can allow you will be surprised to find out that whether he understands what the preacher is understanding or not, God will route him to be under the grace preaching, not under the knowledge. He will not get results just by understanding because he probably will be sleeping when the message is going on. And God's mercy is wise enough to shift him to a zone where he can still be a partaker of the hand of God this is very powerful now if that guy begins to allow you use his life as a standard you are in trouble because the man is not even aware that something special was done to him so he will say you can see my life I didn't do anything God just keeps blessing me any day and then you will try to do that at 21 and you will be very surprised when God vetoes his principles, he's not neglecting them. It's how far his love can go. It matters that we know God. There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. Not ignorance in terms of absence of knowledge. Ignorance in terms of ill-constructed spiritual information. Information that was not constructed properly to provide victory so we have a little here and a little there like materials for building a house but not well structured random spiritual information scattered around our spirits and our mind and we fish out anyone in the face of danger we continue to fish them out one by one hoping at least one can work but platforms like this were provided to give us accuracy so that your understanding will be very exact. You are not guessing. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house. Your home, we welcome you today. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. This is your house, your home, we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your your home, we welcome you today. So come up here, there is an attempt to challenge us to rise beyond the dimensions of God that we have seen and known to a place of greater perfection, to a place of greater accuracy. Revelations chapter 4. Revelations chapter 4. I want you to continue to believe the things that you are learning. The integrity of God is behind the things you are learning. And I give you a guarantee that if you pay attention to labor in the word, to know God and to know his ways, you will be remarkably surprised at how powerful, how powerful God can be when given space through obedience and alignment in the life of a man. When I don't have results in an area, I make sure that I minimize conversing in that area because I do not have the authorization to speak. It is foolish to argue 
when you do not have results. Our world, many believers are confused today because of the interruption that the pride of resultless people continue to bring in the process of mentorship. That while God is teaching people principles, here comes another dimension of pride in ignorance, interrupting the pace of conviction and assimilation. If I had my way and I had to mentor believers, I would isolate them. I would take it like a system of quarantine somewhere. And then we'll sign a disclaimer that if by listening to this man of God for these years and obeying under God, you do not get these results, you hold the person liable. Many of us do not learn because there are interruptions to our convictions. Just when you are about to settle on something as true, here comes a message that delays your believing it. So you start another journey of six months in argument based on what I've had now. Should I believe or should I not believe? While you are, you are debating, you are suffering and your family members are paying the price. Take the risk. Trust something. Take the risk. It's worth the risk to throw yourself and say, let me at least believe something. God, help me. If I fail, let your mercy be there to pick me up. But take the risk. Don't stand in foolishness today. You are here tomorrow. You are there. You are arguing. And while you are doing that, time is going. Take the risk. You must believe something. When Jesus met people who had convictions, he had respect for them. Although their convictions were on wrong philosophies, he respected the fact that they could peg their convictions on something exact. Are we together? Mm. A man who does not have conviction in anything is a dangerous man. He's a dangerous man. Don't stay near that person. It's better to have convictions in the wrong thing. That's why it was easy for God to convert Saul. He believed he was doing God's service by persecuting the Christians. And when God revealed himself, he switched immediately. There was no embarrassment. But the scribes and Pharisees, they wouldn't let Jesus alone to preach. They would be at his crusades. And yet they would never believe. You see how difficult it was? The woman by the well. Madam, you have seven husbands, six husbands. Yes, sir. This and that and that. Yes, sir. And she was changed immediately. The madman in Gadara, you have demons. Yes, sir. You need them to leave. Yes, sir. The demons too spoke. Go and leave the man in peace. And ten cities were saved. Don't be near God. Be connected to him. It's dangerous to be around. You will see everything that is happening, but you will never partake of it. God is not asking for proximity. He's asking for intimacy. Just because you are near God and you are aware of what he can do does not mean you will ever experience him. Are we together? Revelations 4. After this, verse 1, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be thereafter. We'll stop from verse 4. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like Jasper. Remember? that this was not the first time he was beholding the face of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1, he saw at a level. Now he's seeing again and he's seeing something different that he did not see before. And there was rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. 
And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head crowns of gold. Praise the Lord. He said, come up hither and I will show you. Come up hither. So the reason why I am asking you to rise is because there is something I want to do to your sight. Please pay attention. That the growth of a believer is based on spiritual illumination. That in this kingdom, your growth is based on the access to the truths, the light that you can see much more than here. Come up hither. He didn't say come. You don't need to come up hither to hear. Like those who are outside now, without the projector stand, they can hear, but they cannot see. Are we together now? You do not need to come up hither to hear. But if you want to see, Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. Why? So that I will see what he shall say unto me. Not I will hear, I will see light, growth through spiritual illumination. It is a big deal to God that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Please listen. The victory that has been wrought for us in Christ will remain a story until illumination opens us up to the experience. Please understand this. The mysteries of the kingdom were not designed to remain mysteries. So when we say they are mysteries, we are not just saying some hidden things that were locked up. God desires them to be seen. That's why he gave us the spirit. Your growth in the kingdom will take more than desire. Please listen. Your growth in the kingdom will be on the strength of the quality of your spiritual illumination. Ephesians chapter 3, we we'll read from verse 8. Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. Please give it to us. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Look up please. It's projected. It says, Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given. What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Next verse. We're reading tonight. It says, And to make, read with me, all men see. Stop. It's a ministry given to a man to make men see. All men, not some men. Not to make men of God see. You are mandated by the grace of God to make men see. Because it is only as we behold that we are changed. Hearing does not change people. As we behold him as in a mirror, the Bible says the glory of God. We are changed. Transformation is difficult until you can see a reference. Please understand what I'm saying. So that in this kingdom, growth is true spiritual illumination. So come up hither is a call, a divine call by the Spirit of God to the saints to rise to a higher realm that can allow your eyes to see, to see, to allow your eyes to see the deep things, the Bible says, the deep things of God. Because when you see higher, then your life will become that. And listen, listen. Success generally in life is, is a measure of what you attract to your life by who you have become. You have to understand this. It is not so much of what you do but who you have become. The realities that you attract to your life on the strength of the new versions of yourself you continue to become. And that happens through knowledge, through light. Spiritual illumination. This is where the major ministry of the Holy Spirit. Do you know, listen, listen, listen. It is very easy to be born again. The Bible says so. 
that if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Are we together now? Is the word sozo. That you are saved by believing in your heart and then confessing, verbalizing it. But then when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, the, if you would permit me to use the word, the most difficult assignment of the Holy Spirit in the saints is the, the rigor of babysitting the believer until he gets to a point where he allows the Holy Spirit to show him the light that it takes to rise in experience. For many of us, we can be born again. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues, and we believe that by that initiation, we have become Pentecostals, as we call ourselves. And then we stay there and never grow and never see and continue to believe that just because time is passing and you can say, I've been born again five years. They say, how long did you know the Lord? You say five years. That's not a very correct answer. It may be correct historically, but it's not correct in terms of transformation. You are not five years in the Lord. It's your results that will show how old you are in the Lord. You are five years from the day you got born again historically. But that may not be a measure of your true age. In the realm of the spirit, our age is measured by the light that we command. We excel in light, not in time. The degree of spiritual illumination that you receive in your life is a measure of your growth. So we continue to flatter ourselves that just because historically we can count a time period by earth's timing, from when we consciously gave our lives to Christ, we believe that automatically, as time passes, growth is happening. No, the only dimension of growth that is automatic is biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be engaged to knowledge. You grow intellectually by assimilating knowledge, knowledge along the path of a field. Is that true? So you can find an adult who is 20 years, respectfully so, but cannot speak English. Is that true? Cannot speak another language. The person is an adult by biological standards, but when you shift to an intellectual standard, that person is a child. So the passage of time, chronos, does not just make for spiritual growth automatically. The same way it does not make for growth in other aspects. Growth is engaged. It does not happen by default. Please understand this. This is where the pride of many, many Christians lie. We convince ourselves. And you know, sometimes, I'll be talking about it shortly, the, the, the danger of the ritual of tradition. Just because you have been known to be around the things of God for a long time, usually when an election or an appointment in church you understand, eldership or a deacon, most likely you will be the suitable candidate just to honor the longevity of time you spend around the things of God. But it may be the wrongest decision that may have been made. Oh, this man has been 20 years in the Lord. He's a veteran in the things of God. And while they are talking, God is saying, what, what are you talking about here? Who is the veteran? A veteran is a master. One who by reason of his life and the testimonies that come has been able to test the truth. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled of the word of life. That's what we teach. Because some of us may need to honestly admit that from the day you got born again, this year was the first step although it's 10 years. You got born again 10 years ago, but the first correct result-producing step started in 2019. So technically, you are about to be one years old. As far as your age with respect to transformation is concerned. Imagine if that one-year-old man is your man of God. 
is the one who was given the mandate to raise you spiritually. Are we together? With gaps in his understanding. What do you think you will become? He will make you distrust what you already know before you met him. The confidence he has in his ignorance will affect you. The vacillations in his understanding will threaten your conviction. The Bible says to be steadfast, to be immovable. It doesn't mean to be rigid so that you cannot change, but that when you find truth and it has been vetted as truth, stay there. Stay there and be there. For instance, if you have believed that there are many gods and Jesus is just one of them, that's a conviction. But now when you are exposed to the truth that there is no other name under heaven, given to man by which we must be saved. Now you have the flexibility to change and when you find out in truth by the spirit and by the testimony of brethren around you that Jesus is truly the way, the truth and life. You stay there in life and in death. This is my position about the pathway to salvation. That means if I have the opportunity to debate with an atheist, I'm not about to make some historical jargons. This is my conviction by the Spirit that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot understand this reality scientifically. You can only open up your heart for the Spirit of grace to minister this as an encounter. Are we together? To make all men see. To make all men see. To make all men see. I want to deal with something tonight that the Lord put in my heart. Still in an attempt to bring us into an accurate understanding of the ways of God. The danger of what the Bible calls the traditions of men. There is such a thing in scripture called the traditions of men. And the Bible is not careful to reveal to us how far this concept, this way of life can, can interrupt the rising of the saints to the pinnacle of their Christian experience. Colossians chapter 2 please and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. The word spoil you there is to make a prey out of you. Like you go to war and you, they say you spoil the people. You conquer the land and take their treasures and add to your treasures. He said beware lest any man spoil you. Through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Now this concept has been interpreted from the lens of all manner of you know all kinds of theological dimensions but it is true that there is something called the traditions of men and that the Bible says that it can make men become praise. One more scripture. Matthew chapter 15 we'll read from verse 2 Matthew chapter 15 now some gentlemen just came to harass Jesus and his disciples watch the story we're reading to verse 9 why do thy disciples transgress what the traditions of the elders someone is asking Jesus a question now so let's listen to what Jesus is about to say for they wash not their hands when they eat bread three but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What do you do? You transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Five. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, um, it is a gift by whatsoever thou shalt, you know, thou mightest be profited by me. Six, we're reading to nine. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That means 
if you can bribe your way out of honor and be free tradition created that concept you, you get the point now thus ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition please take note of this let's just finish up ye hypocrites well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying uh huh these people draw it near to me with their mouth and honored me with their lips but their heart is far from me last verse but in vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men in rising to superior spiritual dimensions the bible tells us that we are going to confront a demon we are going to confront a a resistance are we together now and the bible calls that resistance not satan he doesn't even call the resistance um, sin. He calls it what? The traditions of men. What is it exactly? What is the tradition of men? Let me tell you this. The goal of this teaching is not to produce rebels. Let me clear the air straightforward before I begin to teach. The idea, listen carefully please. The idea is not to get up in self-pride and move around and begin to fight people who seem to sustain revelations that are inferior to yours i think i need to put this disclaimer very clearly are we together the idea any listen any lifting in the spirit that makes you arrogant and makes you a difficult person and extracts the love dimension from you has been corrupted because growth in the spirit that comes from God must also come with his nature of humility and love. Are we together? These two things must, they are the litmus tests of the purity of your spiritual growth and your revelation. The humility, the Bible calls it humbleness of heart and then the richness of the love of God in you. That if I claim to grow spiritually, and the more I am learning, the more pride is also growing in me. It could be that I am being indoctrinated by the vain babblings of men. Revelation that comes from God in its purest form. Number one produces humility. Number two produces love. You now look at those who did not have the privilege of having that truth from the lens of compassion. It's important that I say this because I think this is one of the reasons why and what we call the new move of God, if not managed, will become another dimension of religion too. Everybody in the body of Christ right now has given himself the ministry of correcting every other body. So that's what is going on in the body of Christ now. Everybody who has access to the pulpit is correcting someone, young or old. That's what is trending. Correction. Everybody is showing how everybody is wrong. It's terrible. Spiritual knowledge should not culminate in dividing the body. It should not culminate in producing arrogant people. No. Paul, at the height of his revelation, he said, I who am the least of all the brethren, is this grace given? It is a grace to make men see to open their eyes when I rebuke them it is a grace when I correct them it is a grace it's more than a desire you've heard me say correcting the body of Christ is a grace just because you observe error does not give you the fortitude and the authorization to correct because in correcting many people have begun another error it's easy for error to start it just starts as an opinion strongly received and very soon you will forget about the reason why you started it and enjoy the new celebrity status you gain for being controversial there is a grace to correct the body there is a grace to adjust people and bring them within the dimensions of truth so i'm putting this disclaimer very strongly so that you don't mix every young preacher and just believe that all together they are carrying out a campaign either to rebel against fathers or to rebel against denominations. No. My position as a person, 
about the body of Christ is very, very clear. I will never dishonor the body to communicate truth. I was sent to the body. Are we together? It matters that we understand this. So that if the things I say sound difficult, for instance, then you, you refer to what I just said, that he's speaking not from the standpoint of sarcasm, the goal is to wean us out of imperfection, to bring us into maturity. Come up here, a realm of maturity where you come out of certain things that can peg your growth, hence your results. It is true that there are many things that need to be adjusted in the body of Christ. It is true that there are many mainstream beliefs that need to be edited and adjusted. Please listen carefully. It is true that there are many things that have been proposed by we preachers, well-meaning, sincere mostly, that still needs correction. Are we together now? But it is also true that an attempt to correct other things is an attack. There are things that are ordinances, no matter how con controversial they sound. Calling the body higher must not be from the lens of our convenience. It must be from the lens of God's truth. That means that I will be a wicked man of God to teach you only what is convenient, either based on my educational perspective. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. Let's assume that because of my philosophical standpoint about the miraculous, I don't believe the miraculous. Did you know that every time I read and we reach the miraculous, I will just jump it and wave it away. And sitting under me, you will find out that you are deficient in that level of understanding. Because I do not believe it. I'm not interested in it. It's not working in my life, for instance. So I trivialize it and I force you to trivialize it. A good man of God must be able to stand and teach truth even if it hurts you. That means your goal is the lifting of the people more than the preservation of your name and your reputation. This is a faithful servant of God. That if for instance... I have thought that healing is wrong. Miracles are wrong. And now I have found the truth. I must sustain the courage to say I have found out that God is still a miracle worker. Someone may look and say, what is miracle a lot? Nonsense. There's no such thing as that. You now see. It is true that believers were not designed to live based on miracle a lot. But it will be foolish to ignore the fact that there is a provision in God's economy where he can come through for people. So in an attempt to, an attempt to transit you to a level of greater financial stability, I just extract away the spirituality of wealth. And I just let you know, go and get a job and be, and be nice. You will be ready for a shock because this world is full of spirits. Full of what? That's right. Then on the other hand, if all we do is to tell you miracle alert and that's all you will get. The end of it is that we will leave you a superstitious and a confused people. Are you seeing that? You will never build one bungalow in your entire lifetime with that philosophy. You cannot have sustainable results. Why? Because your mind has been, spe has been pegged around the, the, the ignorance that it is God's God's, it is based on God to do everything he wants to do. That's not true. Are you understanding what I'm sharing tonight? Yeah. The word tradition comes from the Greek word paradosis. P-A-R-A-D-O-S-I-S. -A -S. It can be translated ordinances. It can be translated precepts. That's where we get the word tradition. So it talks of ordinances. 
it talks of precepts, methodologies that were created by men. Either as a product of culture or as a product of pride or as a product of aberrated encounters that were not consistent with the word. Listen very carefully. There are many methodologies today that came as a result of supposed encounters. Look up, please. Look up, please. Look up, please. Let me balance something now. And especially around, respectfully, let me call what we call, um, is it fair to call it the holiness movement? That several people supposedly have gone to hell and have gone to heaven and they have brought forth standards. Many of them as emotional and impacting as they look are not consistent with the conditions provided that by scripture that makes for a believer to make heaven. Are you seeing that now? And if you are not careful, and, and by this I'm not necessarily even talking of things that pertain on to dressing and all of that. Those ones are established truths that were there long before. I know people that claim to have gone to hell and saw almost every man of God that, that has transited in glory. Now, that kind of thing, the, the vision receiver does not know that he or she is under an attack. Just because you went to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are free. The word of God is still Lord, even over the realm of the spirit. You have to understand this. You can travel to a dimension that you have never been before and see all kinds of things. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, anything you see there is higher than what you have known on earth and you can easily receive it and come back with doctrines that later will become traditions, precepts, ordinances. There are people who have returned with revelations that they saw believers who did not tithe in hell. I don't believe that. There is nowhere in scripture that shows that non-tithing takes a man to hell. There are people, for instance, who have returned and, and have given all kinds of propositions that they saw people who had given their lives to Christ just because of issues here and there in their lives they still found them in hell I don't believe that <clears throat> listen Jesus listen very carefully I teach you sound doctrine when Lazarus listen carefully Lazarus and the rich man the rich man made a request and he asked he asked Jesus. He said, please, let Lazarus come back to life. Huh? And let Lazarus come and preach to my brethren. And tell them that I am there. In Hades, the place of the dead. And then he says, no, they have the law and the prophets. That means, he said, even if Lazarus should come back to life, they will not believe. But sufficient is the law. And the prophets listen to them I still speak to men who are in the earth realm and I still have the truth of scripture that can guide men the average believer now is not sure whether he will make heaven or not it's like we're waiting to see let the trumpet just sound and then I will, if I'm qualified I will know but it's wrong when a woman is pregnant she knows when a student graduates, he knows. When you are hungry, you know. When you are full, you know. When you are crying, you know. Why would salvation be that fake? It means something. Listen to what I'm saying. You know I gave you a disclaimer. It is not about tell them or anything. I'm teaching you truth. I'm bringing you to a point of certainty. Where you know that you know that you know. Are we together? There are many concepts in the body of Christ as it is now that will destroy the saints if not adjusted, if not upgraded, and sometimes if not totally taken out of the way. Please listen. I will just run through a few of these concepts with you and then if God grants grace, we can touch a few and pray. Am I boring you? Hmm. 
Number one. There is a big problem with the biblical understanding, the biblical concept of greatness. Greatness is one of the most controversial issues right now in the body of Christ. What is the standard of greatness? What is the difference between mediocrity or where is the line between mediocrity and contentment? Please listen very carefully. Where is the line between striving to be all that God designed for you to be and lost? You have to pay attention because in both cases you will find scripture that encourage both. You will find scriptures that encourage you. Scriptures like the path of the just is as a shining light. Speak to me believers. That shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And yet you will find scriptures like godliness with contentment is great gain. So while you want to quickly rise to the shining light, here comes another scripture. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Then it continues by saying we brought nothing to this world and it is certain that, listen carefully, I'm teaching you something that will make you a sound believer. It is certain that we can take nothing out of this world but that having food and raiment let us be content. So why do I need a master's? Why do I need a PhD? Why do I need to be the highest professor in that department? Here the Bible is telling me. Are we together? I read a scripture that says I search for a man. You know. To stand in the gap and I say Lord I'm the person I will rise. The next verse you are reading is teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Any dimension that you want to look at life from, the Bible seems to support it. That means there has to be a grace to put things in order. Please listen to me very carefully. Because many innocent people, people destroyed houses that they started to lintel level. Somebody came with a vision. And another person will carry bulldozer and scatter everything and say this I will, and will be a missionary. By the next week, he will carry a bell and a cassock and stand by the road with no one listening to him, ringing the bell and shouting and say, repent, I know what I saw. He, it may not be a lie, but something about the inaccuracy of spiritual communication has destroyed that man. Ten years later, he will find out again he was wrong. While he did that, his children did not go to school. While he did that, the land he had has been taken away by a thief and they built a hotel on it. Life may not allow you to make certain mistakes and come back to correct yourself. That's why God is teaching you this now. There are people who made some of these mistakes and had the luxury of returning back. But you can't return others who believed what you said before. What is the balance about greatness? This greatness thing has been fought. Another concept. What is God's idea of spiritual maturity? Everybody claims to be matured in the body of Christ. At least biologically, there's no confusion. Our little ones cannot claim they are mature. Their foolishness will be obvious. Just give them five minutes. They will do something that will prove immediately that they are children. And an adult, no matter how foolish an adult is, you will not become a child again. You are an adult, it's too late. You are just an unwise adult. Are we together? But spiritually, listen, how can I know that this person is matured spiritually? There are many parameters we have put in the body of Christ. And many of them are largely not consistent with God's idea. Let me give you another, another concept. What exactly is our call as believers? What is our mandate as believers? This has been a big confusion in the body of Christ. Please pay attention. What is our mandate? Others say our mandate is to take over everywhere. Others say you are not taking over anything. Our mandate is just to be born again and to wait until we leave. When are you going to take over Dubai? Are you seeing that? 
There are many people who argue that our mandate is to make Nigeria become like Dubai, the kingdoms of this world. And others say, look, Nigeria will not be Dubai. Stop dreaming. Win souls and make sure souls are saved and rapturable. And both concepts have biblical backings. Please listen. I love to teach these kinds of things. What is our call as believers? Is your call to be a lecturer or to be a preacher or to be a soul winner? Ask the average believer on the street, what is your call? Some will say to win souls. Nothing but souls. Another person will say to, to, to build a house for God. What does that mean? Next concept. The subject of faith. The subject of what? Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. The subject of faith. Where is the balance? What is God's idea of faith? It's been a disturbing concept. You notice that there are so many people in the body of Christ who tell you, look, all this faith, faith thing, leave it away. And others say, no, 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 no. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes. It even says that just shall live by faith. Four times scattered through scripture. In one of the renditions, it says that just shall live by his faith. Next concept, our interpretation of tragedy and negative situations. Our interpretation of tragedy. I'm just giving you a few of them. There are many. The discussion has come up here. A higher level of more accurate spiritual illumination. And I'm showing you the things that have pegged our maturity in the body of Christ. Our inability to find stability in these areas. These are the areas that challenge our convictions again and again. Vacillating concepts. What happens when a loved one dies? Another person says, no way, no way. There's no evil in God and the person cannot die. Another person will say, I was in the hospital when I had the person saying, Lord, into your, your spirit, not spirit, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he had the person and the prayer seemed to be answered. He died immediately. And then another person says, no, 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 no. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God cannot be the author of this death. Where is the balance as to the nature of God as far as interpreting tragic situations? In fact, there are many who it is so, it is so, um, it is even so extreme that anything at all that represents, even if your car stops on the road, Based on the propositions that have been given, you have questions to answer. The first question is, where is your faith? The second question is, where is your God? Now, many believers are confused. And then there are others who just allow anything to happen as though believing that God is a miracle worker and believing that God is a way maker is a lie. We have extended it now to fight songs. We fight songs, remember? Everybody is fighting every song now. I guess we'll start singing scriptures directly. Just sing. At least nobody will fight scripture. Just open to Exodus chapter this and say, look. And he said this and that. We know we have passed from death to life. Just compose it so that nobody argues any concept. There are people who one little mistake, even linguistic mistake, is attacked. And while they are attacking the song, someone else is having an encounter with that same song. Rolling before God and shouting that song. Next concept. One of the very controversial ones again. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship. Fatherhood, mentorship, covering, 
partaking of a grace and so on and so forth it's a very serious concept in the body of Christ there are both sides of the pendulum when dealing with these issues there are people for instance who have made this issue of fatherhood and mentorship such a big deal as though even your salvation is determined by another man there are people who will not eat food until it is approved there are people who cannot travel until it is approved when when a woman is pregnant her pastor knows first before her husband and yet the bible says what god has joined let no man he didn't say let no spirit put it that's a way of putting asunder because the man can say well that means that what you are trying to say in essence is that this child is not my own and the same bible says wives submit to your own husbands there are members who salary the pastors know to the digital detail that even their wives do not know all of that is under the umbrella of fatherhood and mentorship there are churches that are almost like cults you cannot make up your mind that look i'm tired i love you man of god but i think i need to leave i i sense that god is calling me somewhere any other bad thing that happens to you by leaving the man of god takes credit for it as his grace fighting you something is wrong listen very carefully remember the disclaimer i gave before i started you now see why i gave it cult-like approaches of christianity a man of god can step into any house at any time peace be unto this house and just say what do you have oh man of god what do you want anything for you okay a pounded yam and vegetable soup let me have goat meat and, and you know all, all kinds of things that we do these are poisonous concepts what of the ones that they collect in a, a, a member will receive the blessing from god and buy a new car and the pastor will collect it what of houses that have been collected by people in the name of uh, of a uh, of isaac are, are you seeing that now i'm addressing concepts with you what of marriages that have broken as a result of the recommendation of a supposed father or a mentor that you sit down and veto that i as a man I'll never mention my name i as so 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 as so man of god i hereby don't like this marriage because the wife is not kind or nice to me and i use my spiritual authority to break this marriage and the son says yes sir your wish is my command is occultism what about accrediting life partners that a man can be with his wife and all of a sudden from nowhere the geo's wife or the geo can look and say this guy is a serious partner in this church this woman is coming to carry him out of the church it is scattered dangerous and devilish what of choosing for people where they should walk simply because of the selfishness of their service in your church god gives someone open door of two hundred and fifty thousand in a in in an oil company and he has another job of of 35 35 thousand near your neighborhood and he said i know god i god wants you here simply because you are the one in charge of sound and i rather keep you there than to employ another person what of turning members into masons to build to build please don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not fighting anybody the message is called come up here we're challenging concepts that fight our being accurate in the spirit they are traditions of men if i'm building this koinonia cathedral and your head does not carry one block that's how difficulty will remain on you no sir no sir 
and you see members running to make sure at least one block is on their head and I shake off every every uh, um, 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 uh, what do we call it every difficulty in my life now listen that also does not mean that by faith you can connect your service to breakthrough because people have done it they have connected their service to certain victims there is a provision in the dealings of God but it's not by threat and manipulation it's by revelation this is what is going on every Sunday in this country in Africa and around the world what of the issue of seed sowing I believe in giving I believe in seed sowing you are greedy, you don't sow seeds, you will go down. I guarantee you. God will not cause you. Design in the system, no matter how you argue. So I'm, I'm not here to bring all kinds of debates. Um, what is working for you, you keep it there. And what is not working for you, you can change it if you want to. I don't like draw soup. I can't preach against, against my experience with draw soup is that we are not friends. Are we together now? Yes, but draw soup is your favorite, remember. And I'm, I'm so, I mean, two of us, pro, provided we are surviving. So you believe whatever constructs your success and leave it there. But one thing I know is that in the final analysis, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. But what about seed sowing? A man of God's birthday is announced one year to the birthday. As soon as one is finished, they start preparing there are, there are circles where the man of God makes his wish. I want a Lincoln Navigator. Limited edition. How much is it? 85 million. And everybody begins. Heads of department bring 10, 10. Escorts bring 5, 5. And you know, all kinds of things. It's wrong. All in the name of fatherhood. This, all these destructions come in the name of fatherhood. I know a man of God, respectfully so, that one of his sons got tired and literally ran out of this country because the son pays for every flight ticket. Every what? Flight ticket. Including emergency flight tickets. The emotional son made up his mind one day that I will stand by you. I was sent to lift up um, your hands like like Aaron and her and the man of God believed that testimony and from that day provide even if you are bringing him for ministration and you are paying he will tell the son I'm on my way going and the son will it inconvenience them sincerely it's a true story almost tore the marriage apart because when God blesses them that and you know it's not like you are flying economy or, or, or all of this that you can even book early and book in advance with a low price Tickets that no matter what time of the year you book is still expensive. Fatherhood. Fathers, in all honesty and respectfully so, have been some of the greatest abusers of church members. All in the name of fatherhood. And remember the idea is, don't talk against me. Don't talk to me. You dare do that, a cause will come. And truly it will come. Don't think it's just a joke. It will come. But the idea is threat. You don't threaten people into submission. You impact people. You pour your life to them. You become a representation of Jesus. And then as a result, they follow after you as you follow after Christ. That's God's concept of leadership. Next concept. The concept of wealth and success. This one is a big one in the body of Christ, especially in recent times. It looks like there is a very strong campaign against what we believe and know to be materialism. And I will never be um, one who proposes um, a lost driven materialistic lifestyle. I come from a very conservative background. It's an advantage to me. And my persona as a person, I'm, I'm quite conservative but the level of attack that has come on anybody called into the ministry of wealth and prosperity 
is, is becoming disturbing because it's, it's, it makes it look like the moment you capture in your theology a provision for God to bless you and bless people, you are qualified for a harsh attack. An attack under the covering of materialism. And it's not so. Some of the mo most materialistic people around the world don't have any money at all. And yet we have attacked people again and again. Snap a man of God with an expensive anything, anything, even Bible, and they attack the person immediately. Why will you buy this kind of Bible? What part of it is different from the English? You, are? you see, all these kinds of things. And let me tell you the danger. The danger is that believers who should rise financially, now fear is making a lot of people to just retreat and say, well, I wanted to share the principles that will make people to rise while they serve God. But now that I'm being attacked, I'm not ready for this. Just serve God and go to heaven. No matter how you get there, God will fix up every remains of you that arrives there. But for now, I'm not, I'm not going to be part of it. It's terrible. And then on the other side, on the other hand again, I'm telling you there are people sincerely, let me tell you, I've heard different gospels on wealth and success that is poisonous. What did I call it? Poisonous. Dangerous is the kind of gospel that takes God out of your life. Lost, lost after things. Do you know that, let me tell you this sincerely, You've, you've seen this suicide happening all over now. People dying around. I believe that part of the reason may be the frustration that is coming based on the gospels that we have taught people. Because if I teach you, for instance, that your true worth is based on the jeep you have or the house you have and you are now 38 years old. Are we together now? Yes. No husband, no wife, no car, no child, no jeep, no house. You will hang yourself. We have to be careful because the communications that we are bringing in the body of Christ and sometimes even we men of God create a basis for competition. Oh, this is my son. You are a true son. You mean that car outside you just brought it? Oh, amazing, amazing. This grace is working. And other sons are saying, so what are we now? That this thing is not working. I mean, the Bible never said the sons of Elijah stopped being his sons. Although one person received the mantle, they were still sons. So most believers now are under pressure. Look at the speed with which men of God are informed the moment any believer does anything. That is nice. Oh, come to my house. We we'll tie a ribbon from one side of the building to the other and the man of God comes to cut the ribbon. And then the son becomes a deacon. And then the rest now that may be struggling around, they are under pressure. And the wives will usually say, my husband, are you really a man? What are you? You are not, I mean, you, you, every, what kind of a man are you that all doors are closed towards you? Prayer or no prayer doesn't make a difference in your destiny. And the man sits down and is on his way to taking drugs or killing himself. Look at young people who are depressed now. Once you cannot wear something expensive on your head as a lady, how much is this we've won? 700 naira. Ah, you are too beautiful um, um, for this kind of we've won. It's a dangerous indoctrination. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. So what? The, did God teach that just because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you, you run your life down? This is what has destroyed a lot of people. People have gone to buy cars they don't have the money to maintain. People have gone to buy houses and, and debt is yoking their neck to death. Because of a point that was trying, was, was trying to be prove. There are churches that don't have the capacity for expansion yet. They just got up, were taking over, and now open a branch in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Maiduguri. They killed. <laughs> I 
Another concept, the concept of what we call glory realm and supernatural encounters. Listen very carefully. I'm a person of encounters, but listen carefully. There are all kinds. Do you know, let me tell you, something happened in Zaria. Those of you who were there, I, when this concept came into this city, those days, by God's grace and with all humility, we're privileged to be some of the people who were at the forefront of the move of the spirit when it had to do with encounters and supernatural manifestation of heavenly things. I remember those times we downloaded videos of Ruth Heflin and Joshua Mills and all of these people to show angels, visitations and all of that. But something strange happened. When that move started happening in Zaria and people started having gold doors, people started having this, that move did not reach two weeks and everything left. And the Lord told me that the reason why that thing left was because he, he did not want what he was doing in Zaria to be corrupted with supernatural experiences. People will sit down and pray for hours looking at their hands, waiting for their hands to shine as a result of gold dust. Everybody will hold everybody's leg, whether short or not, and say, sit down, that leg must grow. Have, did you see that concept? And just imagine in their minds that leg is coming out. The person was fine. When legs grow, don't you see it? This, listen, listen. And most of these things happen with charismatics. So the average man of God is looking for this something spooky. And your hand is wet and you say, wow, supernatural oil. Let me tell you, many of you know my experiences. I've had these supernatural experiences of oil, of all of these things. So I know what I'm saying. What of those who sit down and imagine angels? It can even be an attack. It can be a spirit being. Now, please listen to what I'm telling you. So people keep roaming around searching for visions and searching for experiences. They close their Bible for weeks. And they, are, they just want the room, something wind. This is the wind of this. They quickly record it on a phone. And say that I had an encounter. And the devil says this is, this is an open door. And one day that person will get a visitation. Because you don't know what a spirit looks like. Angels don't have feathers. Read your Bible. No, feathers are not for angels. pride in these experiences I am a woman of God because I see visions every day I am a man of God because I see visions a believer who is walking based on the word now closes the Bible and says I'm going on a three day fasting Lord what is in this vision that I can't see are we together now and you are fasting and praying and people begin to pray until they land in the hospital with, with problems of bipolar. Talk to me. I'm, 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 it's true. Doctors will tell you. How many times have we gone? I'm not, I'm not insulting the people. Don't get me wrong. But many of them continue to pray until they have encounters. Remember the gentleman that came from one of the cities, the Jesus guy and the Judas? Do you think that guy started like that? He started as a sincere servant of Christ, but with the obsession for encounters. People will get up in the night and they are looking for anything superstitious. The moment light, there are birds that come in front of my window every morning. They keep pecking on the window. I can, I can, now, I can now snap those things. I mean, anybody who studied the biological sciences know what these birds are trying to do. Sometimes they sharpen their beak. I can now get up and keep recording these birds for one week and say I have divine messengers. How many, how many birds were messengers in the Bible? Birds brought raven. Yes, I agree. How many birds spoke in the Bible? They only brought food and leaf from Noah to confirm that the flood had finished. 
Many of you were doing well, believing the truth of scripture until this era of visions just came and corrupted the purity of your experience. I'm not saying visions are wrong. We need encounters. Are we together? So because of this, many people now started studying Scientology. Are we together? And all kinds of new age movement. The, the ability to align your body and your consciousness to the forces of the universe in the seven regions of the earth. And before you know it, it starts working. Because you have touched something that is not of God. Two years down the line, you, you are seeing abilities working in you automatically that you know cannot be regulated. There are many people walking in power today. They are not devilish, but their appetite for power and the supernatural open them up to anything. Whether it is a shrine, whether it is a man of God, whether it is a prophet, just give me something that will shut them out of, of, of the people from my region. And you receive something because everyone that seeks... There are people who have studied transcendental meditation and yoga all in a bit to mix religions. They just want this out of body experience desperately. They want to come back with messages and they've had it. And many of them, you know that there are different pseudo-Christian sects that have all kinds of encounters. They can, they, they can program your body to have all kinds of astral travels. To the point now we are confused in the body. Because we have to balance this. It is alright when an insincere person encounters these graces. But what happens if these graces have been received by your friend? Do you call your friend fake? Do you call your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife fake? One of the latest ones now in the body of Christ is prophetic chanting. Everybody is holding red, uh, 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 what they call it, phones. With all kind, you don't sing, you just chant. Chanting didn't start today. And it is scriptural that there is a dimension of prophetic worship. But if you are not careful, very soon, one day you will be hearing the tongues. And it will sound like Arabic. The communicator does not even know when he has delved into something. See, look, let me tell you. Please hear me, believers. The apostolic and the prophetic were designed by God to create the coordinates, the boundaries of the growth of believers as they themselves align to Christ. Be careful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Be careful. Do you know that the concept of chanting started from our forefathers? It was a tradition. Anybody here that comes from regions where they do traditional festivals, you will know that these are things that... It's, it's a mystery in the spirit that was hijacked by dark powers. And it's part of the things that because God is preparing the church for the move of God. And so some of these ordinances have been restored. But if they are not guided... Any move is usually corrupted when there is no balance. So people begin to delve into some of these things. I'm showing you issues that need to be addressed to stabilize the growth of the church. Very soon we will not have choruses again in church. As soon as we come, we say, praise the Lord, welcome to Koinonia. Mike will start playing some. Everybody will just start shouting like a madman. You find your own path and you are singing. I'm not being sarcastic. Until one day, someone will find out that the more you sing, the more your neighbor is getting mad. And you are wondering. Have you not seen people whose hands were laid on them? And the moment hands were laid on them, they started having demonic encounters. 
It is not because they are the, 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 those who laid hands are necessarily evil. They themselves have not vetted the source of the power. They are sincere people. Random laying on of hands, more grace. It says, lay hands suddenly on no man. Because laying on of hands is a system of transfer. It's also a system of exchange. Are we together? Now there are different other concepts coming. There is no heaven again. So says the vision that other people are coming with. Or many people are saying the heaven other people saw. Now they are seeing other higher heavens. Oh, come on, please. You, you go online and see people who have had encounters and came back with spirits who are saying, forget all that thing. Because let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters, Satan wants everything God wants. And the moment Satan discerns a move of God, he will come. Certain Christian sects, have you read how they started? Was it not encounters? They had encounters with spirit beings. Who attempted to correct scripture and that's how error came a time will come I pray it does not happen where you will be afraid to go to church because you are not sure of what that version of teaching will open you up to even these mysteries you see these mysteries you see if it's not guided you will enter into mysticism in the name of mysteries Every mystery in the scripture is just a mystery to be revealed. It is the revelation of the mysteries that we are concerned about. Because the highest mystery in the New Testament is Christ. And the highest mystery is called the mystery of godliness. That's it. That Christ became a man. The mystery of his incarnation and his virgin birth. Are we together now? Yes. His suffering in the flesh. His ascension. His glorification. That is the highest mystery. Every other one is an auxiliary mystery that connects to it. So that you don't just say. There are many people who say. Ah, they send me texts. Papa, thank you for this mystery. Tonight I have a night vigil and I want to share a mystery. I said, where, where is this one coming from now? And the terrible thing is if you don't balance this, anybody who fish is demon from anywhere and try to trace it to you. <laughs> Miracle alert has made many people lazy. They have not seen that is proof of God's mercy. And sometimes it comes to encourage the faith of people. There is a level of spiritual knowledge if you have been given, you would never have miracle alert. God will say you are joking. This is too much laziness for the level of revelation you have. Go and get a job. Go and, and give value. To whom much is given, talk to me. Much is required. Notice the people that have miracle alerts most times. There are people that God is encouraging. You are wondering why it didn't happen to you. I'm giving you the answer now. Because God is saying, I am not. Yes. Yes, sir. You can have it. But let listen to me. If I sit down now and I say, Lord, why will, where will you give me miracle alert? God will say, Habba. God speaking, Habba. My son. To whom much is given. Don't, don't, don't embarrass the investments of God on your life. There are some things that were meant to encourage believers. You have been taught value. You have been taught diligence. Are we together now? You cannot expect God to just continue to do all of No. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Come up hither. Is a call to know where to stand on these matters among many that you must know where to stand that you be unshakable you'll be immovable please listen to me that when you say I am a man of faith you know what you are saying I will never in my life with what I know today 
place value on anything in my life outside of Christ my true worth is the blood of Jesus my true worth is not pounds and dollars and cars please listen to me you will never find me depressed not over money not over house I will excel God will bring the houses he will bring the cars but never will it be that these things become the basis of my confidence a newer car or a better car will not suddenly make me know that ah, God you are faithful he's faithful the apex of his faithfulness has been demonstrated already in what Christ did is God speaking to someone now this must be the basis of your confidence this is this is a this is a vaccination against depression apostle look at my life guess how old you think I am can you believe that I'm 41 nothing is happening in my life and you leave God I know that God wants to bless you but if you leave God because nothing is happening you were not taught well leaving God because things are not going well in your life my brothers and my sisters is proof of weakness it's not strength what shall separate us from the love of God that you get to a point where you stand it is not what happens or what does not happen that governs your faith apostle i'm coming for miracle service next week i'm trusting god for a child i agree god will give you a child but that you can look at god and say lord if in my lifetime i don't have a child you are still lord you are still king i will serve you with the zeal of a woman with nine children a lot is going on in the body of Christ that is a reflection of the poor teachings and mentorship. Lord, how can you do this to me? How can you do this to me? No. I'm going to make an example with someone now that will shock you. Madam, please stand. You, this one looking at me. Yes, please stand. Where are you coming from? This woman, let me tell you a little story. This woman you see follows me almost everywhere I go to minister. She's had a child with a condition and she's been trusting God for the healing of that child. I apologize if I embarrass you. I hope I didn't. Look at this. I'm just trying to encourage people. Up until the time I went to Eboi, this woman you see followed me with her child. I observed this woman as she prayed and cried and shouted before God. And I knew that it was not just for the child. From Enugu, she's here again to come and receive the word and to go. Please listen to me. I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially. Go and get that message and listen to it. There is something about our concept of Christianity that we must balance. If we do not balance this, we will be in big trouble. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of things. Brothers and sisters, we are people who are prosperous by the grace of God. God has been merciful to us as individuals and as a ministry. We will never look down on the role of the blessings of God. But far be it from me that wealth and all of this will rise above Christ. With or without them, I tell you the truth. Christ remains Lord. This is what you should learn. All this, this backsliding talk. God didn't do this. I, 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 no, it is, it is proof that you are not grounded. If I come here and I find only 10 people in Koinonia, I will go back concerned and I will say, Lord, what is wrong? But to say, okay, Lord, I quit ministry. I will just go and write books and do seminars. No, sir. I'm a ministry for life this thing we have come is not it's not an ambition to use and make money it is not because we didn't have options it's a call by revelation we have pledged our life and our blood so when people love god and don't get money and then they are depressed and just sign out of ministry say me i've retired oh what are you doing i want to start a block industry did you have to leave ministry to start the block industry no but somebody taught you that you have to choose either of them. 
please listen to what I'm telling you and you will be sound and you will be balanced. A precious, precious man of God that I love very much. Just known him for not too long. Um, it's possible that he's even following now. Um, he lost his precious loved one and I remember us just conversing through the night and he was just crying and saying, Apostle, I cannot believe this. This precious woman I love with all my heart has gone to be with the Lord. And I told him, listen to me. I'm a man of God. I'm a miracle worker by God's grace. I have seen all kinds of miracles in my life and in this ministry. But one thing I can tell you is that every time we do not understand God, we tell him, Lord, you are greater. I played for him a song from my phone, Don Moen's song. And I encouraged him. I said, just keep quiet and listen to it as I play this for you. And when he finished, I told him, I'm standing by you and all of that. A foolish man of God would say, no, no, let's forget this. Let's, let's go to that mortuary. I've been to the mortuary before. I've told you this thing. It doesn't mean I'm not a man of faith. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the ways of God. It's the foolishness that is destroying young ministers. They will call police for you one day. If you don't learn the ways of God. There are times that you may not have answers as a man of God. Don't be embarrassed. It reminds people again that you are not God. And it reminds you too. The pride to always have answers to the issues of men will kill you as a preacher if you don't learn. It is okay to not have answers and recommend them to God who created you, the man of God. I told you I used to feel sad when I prayed for people and they were not healed, especially for barren women, it disturbed me for a very long time. Lord, why would you bring this kind of people to this ministry when there's this kind of problem? Let me ask you a question. What is the condition that must happen in your life today for you to leave God? Think about what I said very carefully. Don't assume you have the answer. If I want you to leave God today, what must I do to you? At what point will you leave God and say, I've had enough? When you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, when you don't have school fees for your children, or when you don't feel like you are growing spiritually, at what point in your life when your business fails, when your property is repossessed, I give you sound doctrine that will preserve your Christian experience that in the maze of debates that continue to fly around the body of Christ, you don't join to scar people, but you stand immovable. I know whom I have believed. Megirma Megirma, Megirma Megirma, Megirma, Megirma Megirma, 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 Megirma Babu Babu Wani Kamar Dakai Sing it one more time. If, if there's any really elderly person, don't bully anybody, but if there's any elderly person, 
please they can sit some of this this space here some of the worship team people can stand up the gentlemen can stand up stand up and stay by the wall let our mothers sit down if they are mothers or fathers if you are if you are an adult but you are still young please stand it doesn't mean that just because we know what elderly is if you don't look like one of these are mothers please stand if you don't look like one of these are fathers stand but just to make sure that uh, we help them if there's a pregnant woman let her sit our pregnant ladies are no 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 sit down sit down sit down sit down if you're pregnant and there is a reason why you cannot stand just wave your hand somebody will help you why am I doing these things so that you will learn and then you will know that these things were not acting are we together we're not doing it to demean the younger people but we're doing it to show you the excellency of the practice of the law of honor are we good can i continue we'll find somewhere you know i'm so excited it just reminds me of how this thing all started those days those days there was no suit no nice cloth don't let all these things deceive you we would wear just anything was fine we didn't have the, the rigor of looking for any adornment that will cause pain in your wardrobe. You just picked your Bible and off you went. And we prayed without wondering who was fine, who was not fine. We knew no man after the flesh. It was Jesus and fire. That was all that was our concern. Praise the Lord. Imagine that you tried to pray to stop this rain and it didn't stop. Because the Bible says we have power over everything. Is that true? So imagine my precious people who were outside that you lifted your voice and you said, Rain, I stand as a child of God, as a believer, and I stop you and the rain stopped. Or the rain did not stop. And then you are suddenly embarrassed and discouraged. And you say, Lord, this thing does not work. No. Listen, I'm not teaching you to be faithless. But I'm teaching you that when things do not work, do not be embarrassed. He is still Lord. He is still Lord whether results happen or results do not happen. Okay? Right, so let's talk about greatness for a few minutes and then we'll spend time praying. If this rain does not stop this night, you can be sure that we're going to pray until you come up here that this night. <laughs> what, what I've been looking for, I finally found. You'll be free to remove your shoes and pray till you come up here. That. The visions you've been wanting to see, you will see it this night. You will pray until the visions come. Greatness, please look up. In this kingdom, God is not against your being prosperous and your being influential. Let me balance that very quickly. I've heard men of God say all sorts of things. If you're standing and you can't write, don't worry. You can always get the message. I know you are wet and your writing materials may be wet. Don't worry. I've heard preachers say that God's idea is not for you to be the most blessed person. God's idea is not for you to be this and that in a bid to create balance to materialism. That teaching in itself is error. God is not against your being great. Please listen. God is not a God of mediocrity. Heaven is not a place of mediocrity. Are we together? And everywhere the value system of the kingdom has been re received, there is excellence, there is leadership, there is influence. So it is all right to aspire to be great. Please listen. It is all right to aspire to be wealthy. It is all right to aspire to rise to the pinnacle, the zenith of your pursuit. But the problem here is 
when your relevance and your self-worth is tied to those things. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? That when you say, I am a failure until Naira and Cobble in my pocket proves otherwise, there is a big problem there. I am a failure until a husband or a wife comes into my life. I am a failure until my womb can give birth to a child. No. No. That's where I have a problem. A man's life, the Bible says, does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. That means it is possible, quite honestly, to have nothing in this life. And if you have Jesus Christ, it is called the riches. Give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible calls it the riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. What? The unsearchable riches. That means if you have Christ, you are great. You have Christ, you are wealthy. Honestly speaking, you may not be able to do much in this life. Because the human beings that work in this system will not regard what you call valuable as real value. But I can tell you one thing. That have everything in this life minus Christ, you are not great. True greatness is not measured in silver and gold and pounds and dollars and houses and cars. True wealth is measured in the abundance of your knowledge of Christ. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love very powerful song sing it one more time yeah hey, you have captured my heart consumed my heart with your love and if all i say is jesus jesus that's more than enough Money minus Jesus is poverty. Education minus Jesus is illiteracy. Influence minus Jesus is mediocrity. Jesus is the one who gives value to everything in your life. Redefine your concept of greatness, my brothers and my sisters. To know that anything you have in this life, please listen, minus Jesus, you do not have anything. That means the one thing in your life that gives value to everything must be protected at all costs. Are we together now? Yes. We have garages for our cars. We have stores for our food. But many times we do not have a place for God in our homes and our hearts. We have little safes maybe in our houses where we keep the little money that we have. We have bank accounts. We have ATM cards that we protect so jealously. The moment your ATM falls, by the next day you're on your way to the bank to get another one. But where is his place in your heart? Listen very carefully. And sometimes we men of God have brought a wrong concept. When you stand to see Joshua Selman dress, ah, this is wonderful. That may be wonderful, but all this is nonsense without Jesus. I repeat, nonsense without Jesus. The true value of a man, my brothers and my sisters, is not the jeep that is packed. When you know this, no man will intimidate you who does not have Jesus. 
You don't stand and a millionaire comes without Jesus. And just because he's driving a very pricey car and traveling in a private jet, you stand with your Jesus and look stupid. Not after today. I know that I will increase. I know that I will strive to be the best. But with or without prosperity, I am still wealthy and I am still great. This is very powerful. It's a revelation that God gave me early in life. I have never felt more useful, more important because of the things around me. I tell you sincerely, the way I felt before I had a car and the way I feel now, in all fairness, is not really different. The only difference is that it's afforded me more convenience. But to feel more important with a car key or without a car key, it will never happen to me. Whether a car or no car, I know that I'm valuable. Jesus has made me so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you pass jam or you don't pass jam, passing jam is just a system of getting you to navigate the path of success on earth. Whether you pass jam or not, you are still valuable. Whether you go abroad or not, you are still valuable. Please listen to me. As a graduate, whether you have a job or not, I'm showing you the antidote to depression and suicide and all of these things. Come Sam, come Pastor Alpha, come Pastor Femi. Now look at this gentleman looking all sharp. And then imagine with me for instance that you stand among them and you feel I'm not rich. I am not this. This is what the devil will tell you. Remember that Satan is the master of the sense realm. Everybody say the sense realm. That means you will use what you see, what you hear to tell you things about your life that God did not say. So he will tell you, you cannot belong here. Why? Because you don't have this suit. You don't have this kind of shoe, this kind of that. And then you back out. This guy is not born again. This guy is not born again. This guy is an idol worshiper. But just because they have physical things, you reduce Jesus to become nothing. And you will give up Jesus a thousand times to become like this man. I will never envy any unbeliever in my life. I will be inspired by their achievements, but not to the detriment of the riches of Christ in my heart. Is God speaking to us? Men of God, learn this. It is not when you begin to wear golden rings and golden chains and you have a convoy of people driving you. That's not when you become successful as a man of God. Please hear me. It is not when you have protocol standing at your back and call. You now say ministry is doing well. That's a devilish indoctrination. Be excellent, but not at the detriment of your spiritual sanity. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more. What's the other part? I've got something more than gold. I've came into the world. And that's it's more than One more time. Something more than gold. When you understand this song, you will go back to your one room. Now that it's raining, maybe rain is falling on your bed now. And you sit down and suddenly you are wondering, but if I really knew God, wouldn't I be rich? Wealth has nothing to do with the knowledge of God. Wealth has to do with the application of the principles of value and productivity 
don't reduce the wealth of your Christian experience and insult the wealth of Christ in you. You check your CGPA and you see a third class and you just say, I'm finished. Ah! This life is over. No job. No nothing. Ah! I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to myself. Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to the world. Jesus, you're more than gold. I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Somebody met me years ago and said there's a trend of suits, apostle. That at your level you should start wearing. I said, why? He said, because that's what is raining. I said, I don't know who they are, but let me tell you this. I dress well, but I will never be under pressure. Never be under pressure. I will be as decent and excellent as I can be, but I reject any pressure upon my head to mismanage my finances because I'm trying to prove to people that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive with or without miracles. Did you hear what I said? My prosperity is not the reason Jesus is alive. Anybody waiting for me to be rich, to believe in Jesus, will soon go to hell. Because wealth is not the seed for salvation. The convicting power of the Spirit is. Please be careful so that you don't get under pressure to say, I want people to see my results so that they will be born again. It is true that your results affect them. But if their heart is made up to be hardened, there is nothing they will see in your life that will take them to Jesus. People saw the miracles Jesus performed. Yet when he resurrected, some doubted. It takes the spirit to convict men. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. I'm drumming it today that in coming up hither, your greatest value is Christ. Not a Benz, not a Navigator, not a Rolls Royce. Thank God for these things. But they are simply metals without Christ. Are we together? Thank God for your beauty. If that is the highest perception of value in your life, then it's unfortunate. Christ in us. Talk to me, believers. Christ in us. Christ in me. Not certificate with me. Not a good shoe with me. Not just PhD with me. I don't demean these things. We are blessed people and successful people in this ministry. But I tell you, I count all things but dung for the excellency of Christ. God forbid, but if my house is to catch fire now, and I stand before God to tell you, if my house is to catch fire, and they tell me, Apostle, you have one minute to carry the most valuable things in your house, before it gets burned to ashes. The first thing I'm going to carry, I won't carry a Bible. You think I'll carry a Bible? I can buy another one. I won't carry a Bible. I will carry my notes. The truths that God gave me. Are we together? I will carry my notes. Number two, I will carry my phone. My phone is important. And my laptop, my, my gadgets. I will carry them. Number two, or number three, I will carry, I think I will carry my card that has my ATM and all these things. <laughs> and it's not because of loss or fear. It's out of responsibility. If I'm not able to carry it, I will not feel bad. Once I carry these books, and I can carry my phone. My contacts mean a lot to me. Any other thing in my house can burn to ashes. The cars can burn to ashes from where they came from. 
How do you respond when things leave you? It tells me to the degree to which Jesus is enthroned in your life. You lost 10,000 naira till today you are still depressed. You lost it last year. You still believe you will find it. It's carnality. My brothers and my sisters, it is lost. Are we together? Jesus. The greatest asset this man has that stands before you is not a flourishing ministry. It's not bank accounts with money. It is not properties and assets. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, the most valuable thing in my life is not outside me. I don't trust anything outside me. They can come and they can go. Is God doing something in your mind today? This grip on things as the proof of success. No. Don't be carried away by material things. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. Please hear me. The real value of the believer is the riches of Christ. I need to drum this again and again. So don't act. Whatever leaves you, check whether Jesus Christ left too. If he's still there, relax. You are still blessed. You are still great. You are still wealthy. Even when death comes to take your life, if Jesus goes with you, you did not lose. That's why Paul said to die is gain. Provided he left with you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Certificate without Jesus Christ is vanity. It may not look like it because of the job it can give you. But keep growing old. You will soon find out that everything minus Jesus is vanity. Marriage minus Jesus is vanity. It doesn't look like it because of the children that come. It doesn't look like it because of the status that it gives you. Ah. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. You. you are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. That's a true believer. Alpha, Omega of my life. I cannot define my worth by what phone I'm using. Hear me, believers. There are some of you now, your prayer request that you've written for next week is a phone. Oh God, give me a phone of 200,000. What's the most expensive phone? What's the class of phones? A what? iPhone. So you have an iPhone and you move around with it, expecting respect. Demanding respect. I have an iPhone. No. That's not somebody who knows Christ. My shoe is 250,000. That shoe cannot raise the dead. That shoe cannot give life to any other person. I'm not teaching you to be mediocre. I'm teaching you to be blessed but with understanding. That everything around your life minus Jesus is useless. Our fathers used to say, take the world and give me Jesus. We hate what they said, but the idea was that nothing compares to him. But right now, our lost, driven generation says, give me Jesus and give me other things. This is what we mean. I don't want to lose anyone. Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with prosperity? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with greatness and appointment? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ to a flourishing ministry? I am not great because I lead a great ministry. No. I'm not great because of the results that happen in this ministry. Please don't get it wrong. 
You are not great the day you enter your own house. Hmm. You are not great the day you buy the car you want. You are not great the day you see nine zeros or six, seven, eight, nine zeros behind the figures in your bank account. The wealth of my relationship with Jesus is something that nothing in this life has the capacity to take. I'm teaching you and I'm giving you a new idea. The carnality in this our world and our generation will destroy us if we don't restore Jesus back to his place and will depress a lot of young people. The next time someone sees you and says with all this you're going to church, look at you. You can't even afford food of 1,000. You tell him no problem. I am learning the principles. I am coming. But let me tell you for your information. It is not these things that define my value. My value has been defined. The day Jesus said it is finished on that cross. Let me tell you sincerely. He stamped my value. God gave Jesus Christ as a receipt to collect me. When you carry 100 naira to buy Zobo, which one do you love more? The Zobo more than the money. So the father carried Jesus and gave him to take you back. And some, some person with, with 500,000 wants to look down on the power of Jesus in your life. I refuse to be defined by what is around me or not around me. I need the things around me that makes for a successful life. Why? Because they add up all together and help my efficiency as far as my living on earth is concerned. And then my promoting the interests of God. But never will it be the basis of my confidence. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Believers talk to me. But we will trust in the name of our God. He says, vain is the help of man. Never put your confidence in the abundance of the things that surround you. Anything that is truly great, I put it inside me. If it cannot enter inside me, it's not great enough. My bank account cannot enter inside me. Huh. No. The closest thing to Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit in my life is my intellectual property. At least it entered my brain. It didn't reach my heart, but it entered somewhere. That means I value my intellectual property even more than money. Please have priority for your life. Don't go back home worshipping clothes, worshipping houses, worshipping cars. It's idolatry. Worshipping talent. The riches of Christ. This thing has given me rest. Way before God started giving me cars and vehicles. And not because I didn't have the capacity to get them. God prohibited me from getting all these material things for a long time. And I wondered why. Until the spirit of God revealed it to me. He said, I want you to be a correct model to the young man. That their sense of worth is not in the things around them. Miracle service will be here with crowds outside. I would dress with a suit that can buy a bike that is carrying me and the bike man will come and drop me I will drop from the bike with my Bible and enter with joy I'll never forget one time that the protocol collected the car of someone to come and pick me I rebuked them I said never collect any member's car to come and preach to come and carry me coming for koinonia with a car does not add or remove the anointing on my head when I was fasting, the car was not there. So today that God has brought some of this tea and bread, I will be stupid to believe that because of this tea and bread, I am greater. No, sir. My greatness is sub. In fact, if ever I am greater, it is because of lives that are transformed, not things acquired. Do not measure greatness in this kingdom just by things acquired. Things acquired should be the last of the indices to measure greatness. 
it is the wealth of Christ. Then number two, the opportunity to provide transformation in lives. If Pastor Alpha was a drunkard and through my life and ministry he has become a man of God for instance, this is true impact. This is greatness. Next time someone tells you I am great, tell him show me who you changed. If you cannot show me a life, not just somebody you fed, who came to know the Lord through your life? You are poor unless your money brings someone to Jesus. You are ignorant except your education provides a platform for someone to know the Lord. John chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6 and then to 7, remember what the Bible says. There was a man sent from God, he says. His name was John. He says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the truth, that through him, his witness, all men might believe. The real value of anything in your life is how it contributes to glorifying the name of Jesus and then advancing the cause or... or or making for the betterment of people's lives. There are many millionaires who are not great. There are many educated people who are not great. There are many pastors with crowds who are not great. There are many miracle workers who are not great. It is the measure of Christ in you. And the measure of the impact that your life can provide. He is everything. He's everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything. One more time. You. you are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything. So I can take my gold and lay it before him. My silver, lay it before him. My achievements, lay it before him. And say, Jesus, you are above them all. That when men clap for me because of things, I remind them that none of these things can take his place. Are we together? We are going to pray. Thank God it's raining. You will pray. You will pray. There's boss to carry you. But you will pray. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Please give me volume. Much less love and endless work. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. One more time, listen. What is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hey, your presence is heaven. it from the depth of your heart and with understanding. Your presence is heaven, is heaven to me. Your presence, your presence is heaven. Is heaven.
Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. Hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Hallelujah. First prayer point. Lord, I'm tired of exalting shadows in my life. Let everything be dethroned tonight and Jesus alone lifted to the zenith, the pinnacle of my life. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of exalting certificates above Jesus. Tired of exalting my bank account above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting anointing above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting visions above Jesus. Tired of exalting gifts and dreams and prophecies above Jesus. Tired of exalting ministry above Jesus. Marriage above Jesus. Business above Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Don't look around. Pray. Be lifted high, be lifted high, high. oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, the things of this world let me show you how to truly be great when you come up hither Jesus also comes up hither in your life higher higher than anything Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point is a very personal prayer point. Lord, what attachment do I have to anything in this world above you? What attachment? There is nothing wrong with having things. But when these things have you, they are about to destroy you. Lord, detach me. Detach me from any other thing that is not you. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Detach me. Detach me from the obsession for money. Detach me from the obsession for fame. Detach me from the obsession for things. Detach me, oh God. Let my true value be Jesus. Please pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Detach me from the pressure of wanting respect on account of what I have acquired. 
on account of my certificates. They are not useless. But they are nothing, nothing to be compared to Jesus Christ. Detach me, oh God. Detach me, oh God. Is someone praying? Use tonight, use this opportunity God has given. Detach yourself. And with it will go the high blood pressure. And with it will go the depression. And with it will go the suicidal thoughts. I detach myself. The pressure to have things so as to gain respect. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Praise the Lord. Now listen everybody. We are praying. There are many of us here. We come from families. Please listen. And we come from territories. Where the prevalent mindset. Is earn your respect. By the things you show. Are we together? Now there's nothing wrong with our families and our region. But I'm just saying that many of us by default are under pressure. They look at you as a lady and say, the day you bring the man you will marry, then you will earn our respect. The day you bring us a child, you will earn our respect. The day, gentleman, you bring us an employment letter from a reputable firm. So there's pressure everywhere. What are you doing? Well, I'm trusting God. I'm teaching in a small place. That's it. You are, you are a shame to this family you hear. You are a reproach to this family. Look at your younger ones, they say. Look at this and that. You are going to pray. Father, the stress. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to dethrone those things and say my life and my work will never be built on the expectations of men. I cancel it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. I know you've not been able to take in, but refuse to allow yourself what come from being able to be pregnant. Pregnant or not. Jesus exalted in your life is the greatest asset you have. Living in a rented apartment or not, Jesus, in your life, Christ glorified in and through you is your greatest testimony. Apostle, I've never healed the sick. I also want to work miracles. And you are fasting and killing yourself for the wrong reason. My greatest testimony is Jesus glorified. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is that God dwells in me. That Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. We are going to round up shortly, but listen to me. There is no telling the degree of pressure. Some of us are sitting on pressure every day. Your father says at your age, I was already a millionaire. You are now 35. Shame on you. You can't even send money back home. And so all you are seeking for in God is his hand to prosper you so that you will buy a car and rush back home and say finally you want a car here it is if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold truly if all I have is I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than Prophesy gold. one more time. If all I have 
Listen to me. When you see me teach like this, it is because the Spirit of God is ministering to us. Brothers, hear me. By God's grace, we will continue to teach you the principles that will empower you and make you great. But don't get into... That's why many young boys today are becoming criminals. Do you know why? Because they have told them you must bring... God gives people speed, I agree. But remember my teaching, when your soul dies for you to prosper, it's not true prosperity. Many young men right now are becoming criminals. And you know why? Because of pressure. And please let me encourage us, those of us who are parents here and listening, let's be careful as we put pressure on our children. Go and bring a man for me, to, a man that you will marry. Go and bring a woman that you will marry. Give us a child. We are waiting. Bring a car. We are tired. Let's be careful. It takes time for anything valuable to emerge. Allow people to go through the law of process until God places his hand upon their lives. Every one of us started from somewhere. If you saw some of us 15 years ago, there would be nothing in us that is desirable. But God was in the making. And we were given the opportunity to grow. We must give others opportunity to grow. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody put pressure on you and say, bring this. Some of you at home right now, you don't even have gari and sugar and you're embarrassed. Because when they tell you, confess, the, I am a child of God, I am a this and that, you are ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of, my brother and my sister. Every one of us, there were times, we, we, you, you hear me share my story here. I'm not ashamed of yesterday because yesterday was the ladder that brought me to my today. You are climbing your ladder, climb it with honor. When someone comes to your house and all you have is Gary, don't go and borrow minerals from any shop. Tell the person, as you know, as Apostle has been teaching, I'm on my way climbing the ladder. Sincerely, I don't have much physically. A wise person will say, I understand. We listen to the message together. A foolish person will say, you are a shame. Leave him to carry his ignorance out of your life. Are we together? I want to drum it. It is ugly to see men attached to things. The secret to getting things is to be attached to God. The more you are detached to things, they will follow you. You will drive them, they will refuse to go back. There is nothing in my life today, I stand by the truth of heaven under God. There is nothing in my life today, I cannot give. There is nothing that is too special in my life that cannot live. No. When anything enters my life, there is an orientation center before it finally arrives. It's given an orientation. You are a temporary asset. At any point, the master calls, you are out and you are going. The only thing that I will die protecting is Christ in me, who is the hope of glory. If I fall down here, my brothers and sisters, and I stop breathing, I know what you will do. You will pray for me for a few minutes, trying to get me back to life. And then if it does not work, the doctors will come together and you will rush me to Shika. And if they put a stethoscope and say, ah, this guy has died. How can our apostle die? <laughs> While you are talking, I'm watching you. I'm saying, oh dear, you better listen to my messages. Go back and get koinonia. I'm on my way. I'm already going happy. You pray for me to come back. I see those chariots. You are joking. I'm on my way. Going. I mean... Apostle, don't talk like this. What if you die? Don't be foolish. Don't you know death also listens? Freedom came in my life when I stopped holding things. 
freedom came in my life when everything minus Jesus in my life is a stranger. Everything in my life is a visitor. No visitor sleeps in your house. No matter how late he must look for, bike and go away. The only occupant, not even a tenant, is Jesus. He's given me peace. I'm telling you sincerely. I live a very peaceful life. The higher he lifts me, the more confident I am. If you are confident because an alert entered your account, something will happen when the alert is no more there. This is what God is working in you today. I know it looks like time is going, but pay attention. Could this be why you are praying and blessings are never coming? Because the affinity you have for those things is a risk for God to trust you with it. There are preachers who want anointing so bad they will remove Jesus to create space for the anointing. Jesus, come out, let me have some more space for oil. Billy Graham never performed any known miracle, as we know. I don't believe that is the optimal for a preacher. We should press to every dimension available. But one thing we know is that Billy Graham changed lives. His gospel molded civilization. Captains of industry listen to him. Kings listen to him. That is true wealth. Come up here. And the first thing he saw was the throne room. Come up here. And the first thing he saw was the throne room. When he was down, he saw different things. But now when he rose higher, his attention was called to the worship of only one person. The rain is almost done. We'll pray one more prayer. And then I'll take the altar call. And then we'll be ready to dismiss ourselves when the rain is done. But please hear me. The Lord told me something years ago. He said, son... If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I thought it was a joke. And I said, Lord, you mean that I become a mirror? It's easy for me. It's easier to reflect Jesus in our world today than to reflect yourself. The world will always show you something wrong. So reflect Jesus and be at peace. If you reflect yourself, they will say you didn't bab well this week. Your head is too big next week. Ah, you reduce it. It's now too small. You would have left it the other way. Reflect Jesus and enter your Sabbath. Hide behind the cross and let men know if he prospers me, he only prospered so that his name will be lifted. If he anoints me, he only brought the anointing so that his name will be lifted. Listen, please don't trivialize this night's teaching. I'm, I'm pointing to you the origin of high blood pressure. BP and all of these things come from this revelation. I need to prove a point. How will they know I'm not an anyhow person until I show? So let me get a job. And show. my life and all that consists in this life has been poured like a drink offering I've told the Lord do whatever you want to do with me sincerely it's a prayer I have lost the pain and the psychological pressure that comes trying to live life my own way I found peace when I lost the consciousness of trying to prove a point. I found the anointing when I stopped thinking about miracles and breakthrough. When I started thinking about Jesus and the people he sent me to, then the anointing came. For as long as I thought about my reputation, let people know that you called me. Very sincere, but it never brought grace. But I said, Lord... Let them see you through my life. 
give me an opportunity to be a blessing within the lifetime you have given me let me tell you this if Christ tarries and my work on earth is done I don't want it to be written in my grave oh great man this all that is nonsense he changed lives ah, what a testimony he was truly a lover of God and he, through his life nations were restored to Jesus if you can write that buy a coffin of 2000 and put my body inside it. Put it even inside pajamas. That's the closest thing to sleep. Use the suit money and give a man of God who is still alive. Don't waste money by mundane nonsense. I have learned the value of living. The value of living is living for Jesus. When you live for Jesus, you have cheated life. That in life and in death, you have won. You will live a happy life depression free depression free you learn that it is about you but not all about you can i pray for you take it down i want to pray for you we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with our lives i have searched for you and i have found you i have found you you've won my heart and i will lift my voice to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart. If you will search for him, you will find him. Truly, you will find him with all your heart. That's the call tonight. If you will search for him, you will find him. You will find him where all your Father, I cry to you, O God of heaven, on behalf of your precious people. I love them with all my heart and you know it. I desire that they rise to dimensions of rest. And I'm showing them one of the ways tonight. That the way to rest is to live for Jesus. The understanding that you are the definition of greatness in a man. And that nothing, nothing can define greatness in any man higher than you. By earthly standards, money, achievements can seem to bring certain levels of influence and they are important but teach us tonight the all surpassing excellency of Jesus in our hearts the hope of glory the crown the zenith the definition of greatness in this kingdom is Christ enthroned in a life teach us that the definition of greatness in this kingdom is not the acquisition of things but Christ enthroned and exalted in a life. Help us, oh God, to value your presence more than money. To value your presence more than gold. To value your presence more than the mundane things of this world. And Lord, in placing that value on you, may we lay up gold as dust. In the name of Jesus Christ. I detach you from any connection and any affinity you have to things especially money i declare that by this service let there be a cutting away in the name of jesus the obsession that you have to derive respect 
based on the things around you I pray that God will redefine value to you I pray for grace to survive the pressure that comes from society to conform to a mold so as to be respected that you will teach all around you that true value is Jesus and Christ enthroned in a life in the name of Jesus Christ listen and I pray for you that whilst you focus on exalting Jesus may everything that you need even the things you did not dream will come to your life at this level may my God bring them to your life in the name of Jesus Christ nothing in this life will ever possess you in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray sincerely sincerely please walk on us walk on us let this detachment continue even throughout this weekend in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray now please listen those are the other overflows I know you may not be able to come but there are people in here right now listen to me on hearing my teaching tonight the Lord is calling you higher higher than the realm that you have been and for many of us Jesus is speaking to you even through my voice and he's saying my son my daughter it's time for you to surrender completely and to receive of my life Jesus is asking many of us you've been carrying luggages please hold on no movement please let me just make the altar call there are people here that the Lord is speaking to probably you're here for the first time you've been here multiple times and the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now and he's saying my son my daughter you have to relinquish attachment to these things you need Jesus not just as a religious proposition Jesus did not come for Christians his assignment is not to make Christians his assignment is to lift men